Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to our coverage of the Labrooks Challenge Cup. And for the first time ever, the semi-finals are being played back to back. And we've got both games for you coming up. And we are here in Bolton at the University of Bolton Stadium uh, in Lancashire. Shame it's not called the Macron Stadium anymore, otherwise I could have done a very clever French link, but that's gone by the by, uh, because uh, one of our semi-finalists are, of course, the Catalan Dragons. As I say, both games coming up, and Catalan's game against St Helens is the first one, and it will be followed by Warrington uh, against Leeds, and then the final, which we'll have for you here on the BBC as well is on the 25th of August. Uh, as ever, we want you to get involved with us. Hashtag BBCRL, we're on air uh, for the next five hours or so. Joining me uh, to look at both games, uh, two men with plenty of Challenge Cup experience, Brian Noble and Jamie Peacock. And we're told it's going to be sold out. Obviously, fans will come in all the time because there are two games, but it should make for a very good atmosphere. Yeah, I think it'll be an amazing atmosphere. I think uh, the Catalan Dragons will appreciate that. It's going to be 27,000 people here in the end. I think it's a smart decision made by the RFL to put both games together. I, I can't wait. It's going to be a great game, a uh, day for Rugby League. And I, I love the sport as it is. Jamie says Catalan will appreciate this. And actually, if you just look over our gantry here and look at all the Leeds and Warrington fans down below us, They've all got Catalan flags. So everybody who isn't a Saints fan in this first game, it feels like, is going to be on the side of Catalan. This will be particularly special for the Catalans. It'll be the first time ever they've had an away following. There'll be everybody else in this stadium except the Saints fans, so you're quite right, Chappers. I think they're in for a good noisy afternoon. Do you think this will make any difference to any of the four sides that it's being played in this way? Or are they now used to things like this with, of course, Magic Weekend? I think we'll see the best come out of the players. I know from my time as a player, when you get in front of a stadium, there's 27,000 people, there's a good atmosphere, you want to put on the show and it brings out the best out of you as a player. And we've got some high quality players here who will relish this occasion. Do you think that's a danger for St Helens? Or just staying with the atmosphere and then we'll, we'll look at the game. Do you think that's a danger for St Helens? Is that Catalan, who normally wouldn't have a great away following for Super League games, are going to have the majority on their side? No, I don't think so. I think we'll talk about the particular styles of both teams and Jamie's opinion on who he thinks win and how I think we'll win. Uh, I, I differ. I think the Saints are used to playing in a great environment like this. If it is going to make a slight difference to anybody, probably the Catalan, because they're used to having a, a lot of noise against them or the oohs and ahs and boos that rugby league fans can find at certain times in relation to pressurising the referee, they may get some uh, parity there. Let's just show you the uh, Super League table, just to show you how dominant St Helens have been uh, this season. We're going into the eighth stage of the season now, but they're ten points clear of the pack of St Helens and Catalan are into that top eight just about but that league table doesn't really tell the true story of how Catalan have gone in their last 11 games yeah I think it look for Saints it tells a true story they've been the best team in the competition but the Catalan Dragons have won nine out of their last, last 11 games they alongside Saints have been the form team this year this is why I think this is going to be a really really close tight game today Go on then. So look, I don't want to. I don't want to take anything away from Saints. I think they've got the best two players in the competition, Barber and Roby. They play an exciting brand of football, move the ball around, and they're resilient in defence. But for me, I just feel like this could be the day for Catalan Dragons. 
The semi-final is littered with massive performances from the underdog running to get to Wembley. I think Steve McNamara was seeing the full influence of him as a coach. He's a world-class coach and I think he's got the team disciplined off the pitch and I think that filters into onto to the pitch and I think in rugby league the most self-disciplined team and the most disciplined team generally win the game and I think they've got a chance of causing an upset today so I'm going to go with the underdog and I'm going to go with the Catalan Dragons. As you can see just on that Catalan team Josh Drinkwater and centre David Mead amongst the players recalled by Steve McNamara he did rest a lot for the game at Wigan last week they've got no Greg Bird who is suspended Jody Broughton the winger is out he's out injured how big a miss will Greg Bird be? Huge I think he's pivotal to everything all the successes that Catalans have had this year it's no coincidence that him coming back into the team after a short injury spell has led them to the run that Jamie's talking about and they're playing fits and starts they're a superb team when they're on the front foot Drinkwater's kicking the way he wants them to kick he's been a huge influence on this team I don't think they can do it for long enough periods to test this Saints team that's what worries me. I think uh, Drinkwater is your general, covers the game plan, tells everybody where to go. But Greg Bird, for me, is the emotional leader. Every good side is an emotional leader who can drag that extra 5% out of the players alongside him, and he won't be there for them today. How they cope with that is going to be pivotal if they want to be able to win this game. You both talk about Drinkwater and Robbie Hunter-Paul when he looked at both of these two sides' game plans, focuses on Drinkwater as far as Catalan are concerned. It's been well documented in 2018 how slowly the Catalans Dragons started the season. But maybe some people could say that they've been waiting for that special cog to bring them all together. And for me, it's got to be this man, Josh Drinkwater. He's their general in the middle of the park. They've got big players all over the place with a lot of talent out wide also, but they needed a general to pull them together and direct them in the right, in the right areas of the game. Not only that, he's got a strong kicking game and he can take the line out when he needs to. Keep your eye on Josh Drinkwater. He's going to be the fulcrum of bringing this Catalan squad together. When you look across the width and breadth of this St. Helens team, they've got world-class talent absolutely everywhere. But the person I want you to focus on is that young man just running away with the ball in hand, Danny Richardson. He's just making his way back down here. He's a brilliant young player. He stood up to all the challenges this year. Uh, and he can take the line on, he's fast, he's strong, but more importantly, he's backing himself. He's been challenged this year in local derbies, he's been challenged in the big game, but this will be the biggest game of his career. Let's see if he can handle the pressure. Brian, James Roby and John Wilkin, the only two men in the Saints side to have won the Challenge Cup, and yet that Cup experience shouldn't be that important, should it, when you, given it, when you look at how dominant Saints have been this season? Well, they have been dominant, and for our viewers, I probably point out that the big go-to person has been Ben Barber this year. However, if you look at their form of the last three weeks, Johnny Lomax and the boy Richardson at halfback and Roby have been the three players, along with some of their, their bigger boys, have got them really going forward. I think Lomax has been playing sensationally well. Yes, yeah, and I think that's uh, down to Justin Albrook. I think he's an exceptional coach, and I think before he came to Saints, they underperformed, and I think he gets the best out of all their players. My worry for Saints is the last three weeks they've had to dig deep in the world they've played the best three sides within Super League and won and beaten them but will they perform again this week or will they dip that's the question for them uh, and it's a question that they have to take to the highest level in the semi-final today you're right Catalans have very little pressure in relation to where they've been all year and can Steve McNamara produce a performance from this team of course he can but I think Saints will understand the dynamics of what they're involved in as well Mark and I think they'll just be too good on the day teams will be out very shortly let's just hear from both coaches as they've been talking to Tulson Toller. Just to know you once before of St Helens gone this long without winning the Challenge Cup. Does that build pressure or provide opportunity? Oh, a bit of both, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a great opportunity for us today and we understand how long it's been um, since we've got to Wembley, so a bit of both, but um, that's OK with us. Steve, first of all, we have to mention Greg Bird, who's out with suspension. How big a loss is that? He's a big loss. You know, he's... Um... He's been unbelievable for us this season, you know, great talisman. Uh, we're all disappointed for him, but uh, all intent on making sure we, we get through to the final and, and hopefully give him a chance to play in that. Dominic Peru has played in every game this year. You're missing him. How big a loss is it? Oh, he'll be a big loss and, and I feel sorry for him. You know, as you said, he, he's been brilliant for us all year, so consistent and to miss a big game like today is disappointing for him and our team, but um, we'll be OK. Confidence must be going high because of the way you've played in this second half of the season. What do you put that down to? There's a number of factors. You know, we, we just had no continuity at the start of the season. We very disrupted pre-season. Uh, some injuries, you know, which I know teams have suffered now. We suffered ours at the beginning. 
So we went through our tough patch then, but we've come through really well. We've had to play pressure games week in, week out to, to make the top eight. We've done that, and now we get a crack at uh, trying to get to one more. Your friends with Steve McNamara, you've spent a bit of time with him before. What do you expect from him as a team, co team coach by him? Yeah, obviously, you know, they're really well organised side, and he's done a great job in, in turning their season around from, from how they started. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they're playing really well at the moment, so it should be a good game. Your team have won the last 14 in all competitions. What do you do to keep that going? Yeah, win again today. <laughs> 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 no, look, we're doing everything well and we need to. Uh, and, and, you know, that, that helps us get ready for a big game like today. So we want that run to continue. Justin, thanks for your time. Cheers. Thanks, Tulsi. Brian, when you look at this Saints squad, do you like the mix of, of experience and youth that they've got? Is it Are they at that peak spot of balance that a coach would like? Well, I think they've had it for a while, but I think what Justin Holbrook's brought out, as Jamie quite rightly says, is he's given John Wilkins playing as well as he's ever played because he's been given a specific role. I think everybody knows their tasks in this team, and they've got that element of guidance as well. So the long and see to your good short question was, yeah, I think they're in a good position. <laughs> we got there in the end. Thanks very much. Saints haven't even come out their dressing room yet. But I suppose when we talk about Danny Richardson as well, what. He's not short of confidence, so it's all very well having young players, but they've got to have that self-belief. Yeah, I, I like watching Danny play. He reminds me of the best halfbacks. The best halfbacks have a confidence bordering on arrogance, but if you think about it, they're the smallest men on the pitch in terms of physicality, but they've got to tell everybody else what to do. So you need that, and he's the type of player who wants them big moments. He wants that goal kick at the end against Warren. He wants to kick the drop goal to win the game, and they're the players you want to play alongside. And I think they've got four of the best young players in the competition in uh, creation. Richardson, Thompson and Knowles, they're fantastic players for them. What do Catalan want to get out of, say, the first 20, 25 minutes here? I think if they're close on the scoreboard after 20, they're in pole position genuinely, because they do play in fits and starts. They could score points with drink water in the team particularly. So it's a very special day in the Challenge Cup, the semi-finals back-to-back -back for the first time ever. Later, we will bring you Leeds against Warrington, but first up, Saints against Catalan and your commentary team, Jonathan Davis, John Keir, and the BBC's Rugby League correspondent, Dave Woods. We'll forget the season past, the real race for silverware starts right here today. St Helens, and their skipper there, James Roby, have been dominant and dazzling all year, but it's games like this that decide whether you are going to lift a trophy at the end of the season. Great noise, great atmosphere, not full yet, it'll get fuller and fuller as the day goes on. That's what they're playing for. Well over 120 years old, that trophy, and still going strong. And St Helens fans cheered when they drew this side for this semi-final. Catalan, but that was weeks ago. The Dragons have been in fire-breathing form of late, and they are going to offer us a real battle today. There was a plane load of about 100 Catalan supporters who landed at Liverpool yesterday. They brought with them a 1,000 Catalan flags. So when you see those fluttering around the stadium, they might not be French supporters, they might be Warrington and Leeds fans who are beginning to make their way in here, who are supporting Catalan against their usual foe. Let's remind ourselves as to how they are lining up. St Helens there, it's a lineup that has hardly changed throughout the year. A couple of tweaks today. Adam Swift, number five, comes in because of an injury to Ryan Morgan. Morgan Knowles starts because Dominic Peru is injured. But as we keep saying, there is so much sparkle in that side. Catalan have, have got their game breakers too. Tony Shigo at full back. Papua New Guinea and David Mead in the centre, scrum half Josh Drinkwater's arrival three months ago has coincided with Catalan's real surge in form. There's our referee this afternoon, the uh, very experienced Robert Hicks, his touch judges Jack Smith and Marcus Griffiths, and should we require him, Phil Bentham is uh, in the truck for the video referrals. Danny Richardson, what a years he's having. Some big moments in his young career already. Still only 21 years of age. So St Helens are looking to end a 10 year absence from Wembley. Catalan hoping to reach the grandest, oldest stage of them all for only the second time in their history. 
and it'll be Catalan, the French side, who have possession in these very first moments. Tony Gigo, the fullback, the first to take it in. St. Helens looking to restrict their go forward as much as possible. So let's bring in our uh, two co commentators for the very first time, Jonathan Davis and John Keir. Yeah, what a great atmosphere this is. I mean, the setting is fantastic. We've got a beautiful day in uh, Northwest England, and we've got four teams fighting for that uh, Wembley final, starting with this game. And the Catalans will be very happy with this first set, just taking the ball low risk forward and finishing with a kick to Adam Swift. Yeah, good first set by Catalan. Two confident sides, perfect uh, playing conditions. And I think, as the boys said in studio, you know, they'll try and stay in the arm wrestle of the Catalans and then just put the pressure on Saints because everyone expects Saints to be the, the you know, the, the top side at the moment. So, enthralling encounter. St Helens in their uh, very traditional strip here of white with a red V and Catalan in their sang et or the blood and gold that represents the blood which they spill in fight for their identity and the gold of the wheat fields in the Catalan region. Here comes the kick from Richardson, who's caught late there by Garcia, but nothing too much amiss, caught by Gico, and Tierney will bring it back. Yeah, a little bit of niggle of the Catalan Dragons, a late hit you know, on Johnny Wilkin, and then you know another late hit. So they've come to niggle, they've come to be very, very physical and be in the faces of St Helens. They want to disrupt them. Conservative stuff at the moment. Gilvray out of dummy half. Mead. There is a man who is uh, capable of breaking over, open any defence. So keep your eye on him as the afternoon goes on. Drinkwater, who has been a revelation since he's arrived with the Catalan. Their form really has picked up, not entirely down to him, but he's had a big part to play. The kick is poor. It's out on the full and it'll be a tap for St Helens back on the 20. Yeah, they'll be disappointed at the end of that set there, and key to that was the fact that Josh Drinkwater was tackled on tackle five, yeah. so it put the kicking duties to the full-back there, and he just hiked it out of play. This now is a seven-tackle set for St Helens, so that's the zero, and now the set really starts. It will give them a great attacking opportunity. Adam Swift takes it in. Young fella still, but um, he was a, a very young fellow when he made his debut in this competition. This is a wonderful break here, right down the middle from Luke Thompson. Well, he's been doing that kind of thing week in, week out this year. And a form that has got him into England selection has got St. Helens within 15 metres of their opponent's line. Roby stands and waits. Lomax spinning it across the field. Wilkin back to Richardson. All the way to this right-hand side, and Nakedson, whose pass just hung tantalisingly behind his winger Swift, and Catalan survived that early threat. You can see how important that final play is on the last tackle. A poor, poor kick by Gigo, and then a break by this guy, Thompson, who's been absolutely phenomenal. Tremendous pace for the front row, a great step as well. Yeah, disappointed with the end, though, there yeah. from uh, Tommy Makes. I think he wanted uh, Adam Swift to drop underneath him to go against the grain of the Catalan Dragon defence, but uh, I thought the Dragons handled that really well defensively. They just went up, they held the line, they just mapped out and pushed them towards the sideline. That was a good piece of defence after that initial break by Thompson. String water to feed. Catalan again starting from deep. Inside their own half, Gigo will take it forward. Quick play the ball, and the big fellas, the big forwards for Catalan are the, uh, the cornerstones on which they will build a potential victory here. Tierney out of dummy half. St. Helens know they've got a battle down the middle. McAlorum spinning it left now as it's an attempt to stretch the, uh, the St. Helens defence. Back down the middle by Casti, or Remy Casti. Great who's set. Wearing our uh, mic player mic today as well, Remy Casti. Sammy Sony Langley with a finish at the end. Grace underneath it has been beaten in the air. Catalan keeping it alive here. It's still the last tackle. Back to Tierney. Tierney tries to spin it. St. Helens still can't make the tackle. Now it comes to Gigo. Gigo with another kick high. Barber's underneath it. Lomax underneath it. There's a little bit of miscommunication, but Lomax takes it safely. And St. Helens will have to play it from there. 
And what an end to the set that yeah, was. Yeah, what an end, but what a solid set. You know, a scrum in their own uh, near their own try line, an easy set, great running by the forwards, and a better kick to finish. Well, it's really interesting that they've set out of Catalan with Simon, Moa and Cassio, a three out-and-out prop forwards playing in that middle channel, and they really are getting some go forward, and they're putting some physicality in defence there. There's Thompson, up and down, Roby had a dummy half, Wilkie with the pass back, oh, it's dropped short of Lomax, and I think Catalan will get it back here via the scrum, yep. And Lomax hurt there in trying to get that ball, they just ran over the top of them. Well, they ran that really well, didn't they, but... Uh, that's some hit there, isn't it, from Julian Thompson, who really does carry the ball very hard, but that's great defensive read. He saw it was the Batman did David Mead, so he, he jumped the line, put pressure on the uh, receiver and forced the error. That's really a, a defensive win there for the uh, Catalan Dragons. They're very, very aggressive. That's what they bring to the game. Big, big pack of four, like John said, you know, the... They are going to carry ball all day and leave the, the fancy stuff to the to the half-backs. And he was telling me before the game that, you know, it's, it's a hot day here, but, you know, the, the Dragons players will be used to it. They've been training at 7 o'clock in the morning. It's so hot down back in France now. They'll be comfortable in this heat. I think temperatures pushing towards 40 degrees this week, haven't they, in the south of France? Drink water with the pass left, and uh, Willie Army, the Fijian international, little step back on the inside. Michael McLaurin, who knows all about the route to Wembley, of course. He's done it a couple of times. He's won it with Wigan. Well, I think Michael McLaurin is their emotional leader today. We talk about in the build-up, Greg Bird was missing, but Michael McLaurin was equally uh, as important. Well, they're just trying to plow away down the middle. Moore has lost the ball. No, he's had it stolen. All right, play the had it stolen, penalty for Catalan, right in front of the sticks, it's a gimme two points. Yeah. I think I'd go for two, it's important for them to yeah. stay in the arm wrestle, get the two points, get the ball back, the forwards have been exceptional in the first six minutes, really taking the game to St Helens. Yes, yeah, Sam Mori was again carrying very aggressively, landing on his front there, and just being interfered with his attempted to play the ball quickly. And I think it's a canny, uh, canny thing to do, yeah, take yeah, the two yeah, points, it's been a bit... A, a really quick pace, hasn't it, this uh, this first few minutes, this first six minutes or so. And I think just to draw your breath, put the ball between the posts and get the two points, just the ideal thing for the uh, the French side. As, as expected here, you know, it's nothing fancy yet, no plays behind, just give it to the big lads and do the hard work, and they've had very good field position so far. So here's Josh Drinkwater, whose impact on the Catalan side can be measured in so many ways, but in purely statistical analysis, in points scored, his 14th appearance today, and that is his 146th point, his 57th goal, eight tries. He's averaging over 10 points a game, and they love him. They're very happy that he's in their ranks. Catalan lead here by two points today. Yeah, I think the Drinkwater effect has really, it's turned the dragon season around. And it's really interesting to see, I, I'm with Jonathan Rea, how direct this Catalan pack are. They really are major on, on the Route 1 method. They're going forward in a direct manner and they're trying to play the ball quickly. Caught by Gigo and uh, again offered for the uh, the big man to try and bring it forward again here for Catalan. There's a St Helens coach, Justin Holbrook, new this year. He's brought a real smile to the face of St Helens. Uh, the club as a whole, with his coaching and where he's lifted this club too almost got them to a grand final last year very very close drink water with a step runs into the no-nonsense shoulder of morgan Knowles. that's four tackles dave and they're at the halfway line they really are getting some good yardage with their carries here's casting the team he's done well as well he's just spotted quickly the ball he's made some easy yards mcalorum out of dummy half last play here sammy sammy langi will go high barbers underneath it this time and the catch and uh, they managed to round him up. Interesting listening, uh, reading, I should say, Yestin Harris's uh, analysis ahead of the two semi finals. And he was saying about this game how Catalan had to stop the back three. The first three plays were so important. And that doesn't help there from Catalan's point of view because that has given St. Helens a big lift. That's why it's so important the last play of the ball. You, you either put it over the touchline or you just put pressure on them. You can't nick easy loose kicks because this back three will punish you 
and Jonathan, you've got to be disciplined as well because there's no doubt they did jump the gun there, the, yeah. uh, the Catalan defensive line, and it's piggyback St. Helens into good ball field position, field position where they can be expansive and ask some questions. Great line speed, though. Well, all the time, this stadium is beginning to fill with the primrose and blue of Warrington and the, uh, the amber and blue of Leeds. But for the most part, it is St. Helens supporters who dominate huge swathes of red and white. Richardson's quick hands. And again, it's a little clumsy on this right-hand side. And again, it's high fives amongst the Catalan players who get head and feet. But just watch the hit on low max again. If you just watch it, there's pressure on high. There he goes, just goes, pressure on him, puts, puts him with no space or time whatsoever. And the pass is just checked, and again, the spot defender closes Richardson down. Well, I, I don't think it's, it's necessarily bad skill, Dave. I, I think it's bad decision-making, because they are putting pressure on them, but what they've got to do is just rein in at St. Helens. They've obviously majored on the fact that they're going to really come up on the edges, they're going to give them no space, no time to execute the skills, so that's the, that's the question that St. Helens have got to answer now. And they've called the play before the ball was played, so they had to change it and not give that pass. Here's Fuhad Yaha. Up to the halfway line, and many amongst us who remember his uncle Baghdad playing for Paris back in 1996. Catlan moving on again. Simon, quick play up from dummy half. It's taken. Shigo offers a threat here, throws off the tackle of Lomax, overcomes Percival to pin him down. Ten away. Now it comes left, sharpish again, drink water with a little grubby, but what a take there by Richardson, who's turning defence into attack. Momentarily. <laughs> well, if, the, if there's one player going to defuse a play like that, it'd be uh, Danny Richardson, one to win the season he's getting. All of a sudden now it's St. Helens who are going forward. Well, they've stuttered and stalled so far in this game, Saints, but are they finding their gears now? Roby. Lomax. Looking left, back towards the middle, by Teo. Roby again, way more with a little juggle, but he gathers it in and then takes them on head first. This is the last play, I think it's the most attacking position that Saints have been in on a final play. They're going to go through hands here, and they can do that very effectively. Grace, twisting and turning, he's going to be stopped there. It's uh, the best place that Saints have turned over the ball so far. Yeah, that was beautiful, wasn't it, from Ben Barber? The skill there, there was that rush defence on the edge once again, but Barber just managed to tip the ball on, straight in, straight out of the hands, and it almost created a half chance for, uh, for Regan Grace. And it blitz in very well, the Catalan Dragons, but they'll have to vary it because Saints will read that and then just, you know, play outside them. So they've got to vary their defence. Well, they'll either get deeper, Jonathan, or yeah. they could play outside, or they yeah. could play through but before going round. So they're finding it harder this time, Catalan. Two tackles gone, not quite up to the 20. Just trying to pound it downfield as far and as quickly as possible. Moa. Now it's shifted left. But a bit of bite to this St. Helens defence. Water out of dummy half looking right. The tempo's fantastic, Dave, isn't it? To say the heat, it's, say it's so hot out there. The pace of this game is phenomenal. Well, it's Hugo's kick on the finish. A little bit of pressure, it's going to fall betwixt them between. It's an awkward bounce for St. Helens to deal with, but they have dealt with it. And it's possible over there who has it back for St. Helens. And here comes Regan Grace, the little Welsh wizard who John Keir had the delight of coaching in the World Cup at the back end of last year. And that's what the three quads have got to do. There's still some forwards getting back on side uh, for St. Helens, so the three quads have got to get in there, got to help them with the goal forward. Makinson, shrugging off one defender, but not when the next comes in. No option of the offload, his arm was pinned. Roby out of Dunny half, he sees a little bit of a glimmer ahead of him. McElroy got a half a hand on him. Six tackle, St. Helens looking for a good kick from Richardson. It's a bounce, Yaha takes, looks to his left where he's got support, but across quickly comes Mekinson with that sliding tackle to pin him down. Williani. Two, three, hold. Hold 
drink water back towards the middle. Gigo, full back, very much in evidence in the line. McAloran with a point. He's directing his forwards where he wants them to go. Here comes Simon. Mikael Simon. And a couple of years at Wakefield. A couple of years ago. Casti. 33, Benji, uh, Remy Cassie, he's just agreed a new two-year deal, having the best season of his career, according to his coach. High kick, Grace underneath it. Safe catch again. Cat and mouse at the moment. Yeah, just, you know, I think he put a little bit more pressure on the last kick, but, you know, the boys are saying in the studio that Saints look a well-balanced, so the players knowing what they're doing, they're exactly the same with the Catalan Dragons, you know. The forwards are really doing their job, except... Too many. The discipline now, two penalties. The forwards are really doing their job. Magalorum is controlling the play of the ball. And then it's Josh Stringwood and Lange just kicking the ball. So, very well balanced side here. And the Catalans are really making the middle unit of St. Helens work. You know, John Wilkin, Thompson, Amo, James Roby, they're really having to earn their corn in defence. They're spotting them up and working that middle channel. Here's Thompson again, and it's another penalty. Back-to-back -back penalties for the first time in this game, going against Catalan. So St Helens here will be in a very attacking position. This is this is a big chance there. Yeah, this first, is a big, big chance. First real test. He was all over him, not just hanging on, holding him down. Back-to-back -back penalties. First attacking opportunity for Saints. Amor with a settle. Roby. Goes. Oh, Richardson's dropped it. Yeah. That's a poor pass from yeah. that bit of ball. I was going to say, from a dummy half yeah. like Roby, that is almost yeah, yeah. a collector's yeah. item at yeah. the ball as poor as Very that. unlike, very unlike him. He's had an amazing season, but the so ball was just reaction. dying on him as it's going down. But he should have taken You won't be happy with that. He should have taken it. He's playing on, you know, arrogance and confidence, Richardson. You've got to put up behind him straight away. But I, I think that was one for fatigue, no doubt. Uh, 12 tackles already, James Roby. Amor, 12 tackles, Thompson, 17, Wilkin, 20. So they're doing some hard work in that middle channel. Don't forget the, uh, the red button a little later from 5 o'clock. We've got five hours, more or less, give or take, of Rugby League this afternoon on BBC One. If that's not enough, hashtag BBCRL for the red button. Our next game, of course, Warrington Leeds, and their fans beginning to filter in now. 2.30 is the scheduled kickoff. Uh, but that might just alter a little here or there. 2.45, we're told. And, of course, the final itself, August 25th, Saturday afternoon, Wembley Stadium. One of these two will be in. Catlin at the moment, having the best start, drink water. Sam Moa put down five inside the St Helens half. Drink water, just shuffling it on again, and... Uh, Benjamin Garcia trying to fend off defenders. McAlora, drink water. Kist is well met by St. Helens defenders, but look at that for an offload. That's terrific. That keeps his side going again. On a little bit of trickery here from Drinkwater. And in the end, I think he bamboos on himself. Knocks on. I think even, even, even he thought he passed it. <laughs> St. Helens head and feet at the scrum. Yeah, well, I think that's the first handling that we had. Uh... Gijo kicking out uh, for the seven tackle set, but this is the first handling error from the Dragons, and uh, we're well 17 minutes in the game, so it shows how well they've been playing. But uh, sometimes you're just too smart for yourself. I know, yeah. But I was listening to John Wilkin earlier on in the in the week about this semi final. They said they have to front up and match the Catalan Dragons forwards, and that's certainly the case at the moment. The Dragons forwards are playing exceptionally well, laying the platform. Two points in front, they'll be happy that you know after 18 minutes to be in this position. And we haven't mentioned any of the you know St Helens attacking players yet. Percival, Barber, Swift. You know we haven't we haven't heard them. They haven't they have not possession. They've started for possession. Benny Barber's uh, packing down to the second row in that scrum, which puts him in position here, right in the centre of the field. St Helens in the meantime goes slightly left. Taya, Roby, little step by Thompson. Now he's, he's a good player. He's really come on this season. Yeah, great he? footwork, wasn't it? That for a big man. 
Here's Amor, the Cumbrian, and he's lost, and the ball, the referee says, play on. Giga picks it up, <laughs> it passes to the referee, Robert Hicks. It's, um, luckily for him, picked up by Benjamin Julien. Happy to tell Gijo that the... Uh, the Giga. Giga. ...will tell him that the referee's in black. We rehearsed this, John, it's Giga. Yeah, Giga. Here is Gigo, a dummy half. So they're controlling the tight play at the moment, aren't they? They're dictating it. The play, their play the ball is a lot quicker, the yeah. yardage is easier, and I think they'll go for two again here. He really hooks the ball, 40 mate. 40 metres out, it was excellent kicking. I don't know, Jonathan. Back in, I think, think they might put it in the corner. Okay. Yes, he is. I think Gigo's going for putting two fingers in the air, but I think uh, Drinkwater said no. Stick it out, it's what, it's what they've done here. Great platform to start from. Great it is. Platform. I think, you know, they've, done, they've made so many yards, and easy yards, you'd feel worried if they're into the 20-metre area because the ball cutting has been phenomenal. Here's McAlorum out of dummy half, and Drinkwater hands it on, and Casti trying to muscle his way through. Big bruising effort from a big bruising forward. They're only ten away, and they've got four plays to go. Drinkwater again, back to Lange. Quick hands from Gico, it went along the ground. Referee says, play on, and Lewis Tierney will... Dazzle his way over into the corner, and the referee does not need a second look. It's Catalan who get the opening try of this first semi-final. It's Lewis Tierney, the scorer, and they lead 6-0. Well, it's game on now. Great game plan by McNamara. It's working off, and as I said, when you get the 20-metre leader, they're going to be very difficult to stop. They're so, so powerful. It was excellent work, wasn't it? They set the platform there, there's a penalty. Which allowed them to get the field position. And once they set the platform, look, there's movement, all three pivots to stand off the scrum half, the fullback, all drift to the big side. That creates the numbers and that creates the space for Tierney just to get over it. It wasn't the slickest of execution, but the principle worked anyway, and the winger goes in space and over he goes. Once Percival came in and he, and he didn't stop that attack, they were in trouble. There's a lucky pass here, ball is to the floor, but it gets on the outside of Percival, and that's a good finish, very good finish. Wow. I'll take you back eight weeks, nine weeks, when we did the draw at St Helens for these semi-finals, yep. and when it came out, St Helens against Catalan, the Saints fans hit the roof, absolutely overjoyed that they had drawn the French side. But what a difference between the French side's form that day and how they are playing in the last few weeks. Today especially, Drinkwater slings it over, and it is now an 8-0 lead that Catalan have here. Well, the seeds of doubt. Let's hear from Robbie. Well, the Catalan Dragons have started at a million miles an hour. It's whether or not they can keep up this intensity because this St. Helens squad isn't going to give them a minute. So Catalan looking to pound it forward again, 8-0. What a start they're having, and look at this, they're building on their confidence, building on their position. St. Helens have looked out of sorts so far. How much is that down to what Catalan are doing to them down the middle? How much is it doing, how much is it Saints just being a little off form? No, very much so. I think what they're doing down the middle with ball is taking some uh, energy out of the tank, but I think defensively on the edges, they're putting them under pressure. I think it's 10 out of 10 at the minute for the Dragons. Here they go, Lange put down, five gone, one play to go. Look where they are again, McAlor and quick with the play the ball. Gigo runs it back towards the middle, puts the grubber kick in, but it's an easy one for Roby to grab a hold of. Yeah, I think he's undecided there. He was thinking of putting it up in the air, but, but nothing kicking. But I agree with John. I think you knew what they were going to do, but you had to try and stop them. And, and the St. Helens forwards knew them at the moment. They are dictating the, you know, the, the whole game, the whole pace of the game. Young yeah, Matilese is on the field. Here's Zeptire. Thompson. Still putting in a very decent shift here. Roby. Richardson. Kicking a chase. Fuhad Yaha underneath it to catch and uh, 
Richardson. Some referee given here. Penalty. It was, it was late. The challenge oh, on Richardson was late. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a Take silly right thing right. to do in the last right. play. Right. and nothing hit. Well, the, the play, no, there was so much yeah. composure have the Dragons, and then just to come up with a, a brain explosion there and just give field position to yeah. St. Helens. I hear the referee Hicks saying it's late and unnecessary, and that just explains everything. Puts himself, team under pressure. Well, St. Helens with their best chance, best play so far. Roby, the dummy half. Richardson offers it back, Tyre tries to rip a way through. Catalan holding on just a little, defending on their own line at the moment. Roby comes back to the middle with a short pass. Trying to work a path underneath, is that Matilise who's trying to get under there, it is. Roby back to Richardson, to Barber. Barber's away from his first man, but not past Yaha, who's in with a shoulder. Makinson. Richardson along and quick hands and Thompson's leaping into it here. So here comes the last play. Ten metres out, Richardson again. Short, tyre, keeps it alive, Lomax, great hands from him. Richardson's quickly away, Roby puts his head down, Roby's over the line. Has he got the touchdown? No, he hasn't, knocked it on, over the line. It's a tap back on the 20 for Catalan. There's a Catalan player down injured there in the back of that. What a chance for Saints. Terrific defending oh, from the mate, French side. The great, great tackle, great defence, miraculous offloads. But the worrying thing was Saints, they didn't create anything in that set, John. Didn't right. go forward, didn't lay a platform for the half-backs. The, but what a brilliant, brilliant defensive tackle. They didn't, but I think they might have shown a way through the Catalans there with those offloads. Yep. They may well just have to change their game plan and start offloading the collision because it certainly gave James Roby half a chance. But what sensational scrambling defence there from the, the Dragons. They really are playing to get to this for this prize of Wembley. Good yards, good drive. Good play the ball. Here's Tierney, the try scorer. He is doing a good job, Jonathan, oh, isn't he? he is. Lewis Tierney getting in there and helping his forwards out. That's a good offload as well from uh, Bousquet, who's on the field. Here's Gigo. Gigo's like a Gigo with the offload. But Thierry will pick it up and drink water, looks left and puts the kick behind and swift. Is cool as you like. But he has got a touch before the ball went dead. That kick, as it turns out, was measured to perfection. They're just having a quick look at this. They're just having a quick look at this. I think he's got it right. Swift, sorry. I think he's got it right. It's got to touch terra firma outside the field of play. It doesn't. Did it hit the white line? Did it hit the white line before it bounced up? Well, I think he's got it. I Hold think St. Helens player took it out with Adam Swift, but we'll find out here. He's checking it. Ooh. That's in the field of play for me. Was, um, it, was it short dust? No, it's not Wimbledon. It's a mackerel. <laughs> Drop back. Drop Tell back. you what, there was no chalk dust. At the, at the moment, everything seems to be going. Catlin Dragons away, doesn't it? That's a great dropout, though. Moore's dropped it backwards, but he, word. he's able to pick it up, and he's... Oh. <laughs> Talk about return with interest. Samoa, so big they didn't know for an entire country. Here comes Tierney. McAloran in at dummy half. This now is Bousquet. Julien Bousquet. One of many French internationals out on that field. Battieri. He's another. Just take it up. Just take it up. McAloran goes right. Lange with a pass. Julien. Five gone, one to go. Drinkwater, measured, kick again, and it's a great leap, a great leap by Yaha, but he couldn't quite get hands on that properly. And uh, the Saints fans cheering in ironic fashion, I think you described that, because the decision has gone their way. Well, also because it's a seven-tackle set once again. Regan Grace coming in, he's trying to generate some speed early in the tackle count. They're under the pump for St. Helens. Well, they were 
prevented from scoring in an entire half of rugby league. Guess how long ago, St. Helens? Last time they were nilled in an entire first half of rugby league. No idea. Seven days. They, against Warrington last week, they, were, they were trailing, I think it was 14 nil, but they went on and won the game, so they won't be over-rattled. They've been in this position fairly recently. Under the pump, second best, but able to drag themselves up and win, so... There's enough experience and confidence out there for them to lift things. Here's McCarthy Scarsborough. Spinning it back. There's the offload. That's what they need more of, Jonathan. Yeah. It really is. It'll disrupt this defensive uh, uh, system that the uh, Dragons have got. Lomax with a dribble kick. Tierney's favourite to get there and does. Again, it's just a case of patting their way out of trouble here. Catalan. Is very much an instrumental part of that Paris team, of course. And a penalty here. Well played, well played, Gigo. He just like spotted them, ran straight into them. It's very difficult not to do anything there, give the penalty away, but it's clever, clever play. I have to say, totally dominant the Catalan Dragons forwards. Offensively and defensively at the moment. St. Helens forwards are really struggling to get momentum up to lay a platform for the half backs. It'll be interesting now, though, now that Casti and Sam Mower have gone off, though, yes. to see if they can maintain that dominance in the middle channel. Louis Anderson's on as well. Veteran stage of his career, Louis, but he played in a couple of Challenge Cup finals for Warrington, of course, 09 and 2010, winner on both occasions. These boys have done well, haven't they? Battieri and Buske have come on, and they've really made a hard yard as well. McElorum spin, spills it out. Drink water. Gigo, back. Inside comes Garcia, 12 metres away, still a couple of tackles to go here. Catalan looking good, as they have done for most of this first half. Taken back, within range, on the last. Where does it go from here? It goes left, Drinkwater with a double pump tackle, and it's a try! Benjamin Garcia has bumped his way over, and Catalan Dragons enjoying their day in the sunshine. 12-0 now the lead, and they may well embrace themselves for a job that is being thoroughly well done at the moment. It is their belief, their self-confidence will be absolutely through the roof at the minute, and that was a clever, clever fifth tackle play there. The, the orthodox players to put the kick in, that wasn't the play that Josh Drinkwater selected. He selected to run the ball, the power play, just pulled Danny Richard towards him, opened up half the gap for Gaz here to go through. Tremendously executed last tackle play, and my word, he came under that ball, and over he goes. Great, great try. Yeah, he just drew Richardson out to the line, focused on the ball carrier, and there he is. Little shot pass, Garcia just strolls over. One thing is having momentum, but scoring points when you have that momentum, and they've certainly done that. There is a game on. You can't write someone like St. Helens off. You know, they can score from, from anywhere at any time. But this is a very, very assured first 30 minutes from the Dragons. This is a massive kick in the semi-final as well, because this is the difference between a two-score and a three-score lead. In its early stages, relatively speaking, he's pulled it wide. So it remains at 12 at nil rather than 14. And that means that St. Ellis know that two tries, two goals, puts them level. It's a slightly less steep mountain to climb. I love that, I love that decision to run the ball on the last tackle. Proved once again to be right with the evidence of the cameras there. This really is a test now for St. Helens. This is a test of their self-belief. They've dominated Super League all through the season. Can they actually close it out here? Warwick well, got a foot in touch there. The kick was, I think the, the kick was, might have been going long anyway. Smart, smart by Anderson. If, yes. it, if he's got one foot out of the field of play and touches the ball, it's a penalty. And you'll see there, he's got it yeah. out of the field of play. I think, I, I, well. Oh, did he put it out later? Difficult to see. This has been interesting. I, I, I'd have been tempted to go for goal then. 
Well, it's a penalty. Penalty and Catalan will start. As you said, you know, Dave, the importance of that conversion. He had another crack there, lovely day. I think he wouldn't have been short. Well, it, it isn't the longest pitch either, is it, oh, Jonathan? It's not. It's not. It's a soccer pitch. Here's Kenny Edwards. You can have a crack near the halfway line. He's made an impression since his arrival. But they're so confident. In Perpignan, Battieri. Bousquet. So they really have threshened, freshened things up down the middle of the French. They look bright, Garcia, drink water, Edwards. Help! It's Garcia again. Bousquet. Thompson came and hit him hard, but he just spins off that and carries on. Quickly out of dummy half, it's delivered again. It's a drop kick, a drop goal attempt by Hugo, and it has gone over. And that does give them that two, that three score lead now. 13 points to nil, 32 minutes, and the script has been word perfect from Catalan so far. It has that good prove so vital, couldn't it, yeah. in, uh, in the fullness of time there. Smart to take it early in the game, 32 minutes. But when you look at the scoreboard, a 12 0 scoreboard to become 13 0. Real clever play there from the fullback. Well, you seem like hit the, hit the meters at the moment. St. Helens 303, Catalan Dragons 437. That just shows how well the fours have gone. Well, what a semi final we've got building here. There will be a reaction from St. Helens. You can more or less count on that in the second half, but. Catalan in this first half are doing exactly what they need to do. Well, they've dominated the game, Dave, but they have. They've not only dominated the game out on the field of play, they've dominated on the scoreboard as well, which is obviously the most important one. And, but at some stage, St. Helens will get some momentum. It's all going the way of yeah. the side from Perpignan at the moment. And there's nothing fancy. Ball steal, yeah, oh. ball steal after the tackle was complete. Well, penalties conceded, no, mounting for St. Helens, plus the errors, they put themselves under pressure. There's no value in an extra two points here. No, it's further pressure on the St. Oh. Helens uh, goal line defence. So it's a kick for touch and attack and looking for six, rather than just the two. Willie Army with the tap, drink water. Surging effort from Louis Anderson. <laughs> Couple of yards away. Oh, and a little, a little dart out of dummy half here. I think he's held up. Held up two. Can you see it? Garcia two. Play that there, Ben. Wait for me, Ben. Back to the ten. Two. Play it again, Ben. Goal line, Louis. Well, that was imperative that St. Helens prevented him scoring there, but so far tackles left. Lange to Gigo, opposite on the inside to Mead and tries to go himself. Tierney. Big surging effort here from a, a big standoff half. Sonny Sonny Lange, yeah. the Tongan international. They've still got tackles in the back, drink water. Oh, that was high from Morgan Knowles. And he might be in trouble here. I think he might have that sickening feeling in the pit of his stomach that once the debris is cleared, the referee has something stern to offer his way. Well, it's against the grain, isn't it? It's wrong-footed him, but... Give him some room, please. It's whether it came him to come off his chest and then make contact with his head. Oh, It'd be an interesting decision. He didn't miss. To get I, I don't again. think he's ascending off, that. personally. The ball comes out I think he's caught the, the chest. Yeah. And James Willoughby is there, offering the case for the defence here. It's a big call, this is. What does Judge Robert Hicks right, think? I'd like to Still see down. it again. I'd like to see it again in slow motion, where the first contact was made. There was no intent, and he's just because he was wrong-footed, wasn't he? Hey, he's wrong-footed. Let's deal with it, ladies. Let's get him sold. So his technique ain't the best. Just leave it with me. We're up again. You play it. Yeah. Oh, which one? It doesn't oh, look good. It doesn't look good for I'm reckoning it as I think it's fine. You're going to the take him off for a Kenny test. Edwards. He's fought, and Kenny Edwards has done that to a few penalty kicks, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how it feels, Kenny. It's a massive call in the game. context of the yeah. game, this is. Well, I think, Jonathan, it, it will be put on report, but yeah. it will just be a penalty. 
it's an easy way out, yes. Well, the referee's got a lot of time <laughs> to think about this, hasn't he? Does, does that help Morgan Knowles? Because yeah, okay. the referee's not going Morgan knows, mate, yeah. on an emotional reaction. He's, he's thought about there's, it. There's is it yellow coming. or red? Is yeah. it yellow or red? Our report. Mate, you need to go off. You're having a head assessment, mate. It just looked like he was searching for his card there. Now going. he's having a word with a touch judge. Mate, you're going for a head assessment. You've got to go, mate. He's asked you to go. Send that Kenny Edwards has to get off the field. Here we go. Morgan. Big moment. Big moment. Yellow. Oh. We're getting a glimpse of Second yellow. It is out. ten minutes. He's a very lucky man. His secondary contact. There's a reason. Ten minutes in the bin. So the six or five that ball. remain in this half. The five of the second half. St Helens down. It could have been either, men. couldn't it? It was just down to the referee. It could have been either that. I think that's well refereed because yeah. it's, it doesn't spoil the semi-final, does it, by one team being a man down for 50 minutes, but it was an illegal challenge. And they're going to have 10 minutes playing with 12 men. I think Steve McNamara might have wanted his team to, to, to run the ball because obviously 13 on 12, but drink water going for the uh, option of... Uh, making the 13 to 15. Yeah, I think the tackle was frustration and fatigue because they've absolutely come down the middle, the Dragons. Well, he's, um, he's looked pretty good so far today, just missed the one. Just Drinkwater puts that one over, and it's 15 points to nil. Catalan now lead. They're a champion side St Helens, but this is the biggest test so far. We know what they're like and how they can score tries, you know, whenever they want to. But they've got to turn this round because they've got... The Dragons Fours have got them in a real stranglehold. If anything, they've actually bullied them, haven't they, on the game? They have. And this is where you, we, we've all raved about Danny Richardson, Johnny Lomax. They're still young. They're still young halfbacks. And uh, this is going to be a heck of a situation they're going to have to dig their team out of. But as young halfbacks, they need the pack to get on top, don't that's they? The, that's yeah. the thing. That's it's the, the forwards the that have got to really pull their socks up now. Get them back into this game somehow. Meanwhile, the Catalan forwards keep on doing what they've kept on doing right from the first whistle. Look where they are now. It's an easy kick for the halfbacks. Gigo got space in which to run, and he's going to run it, and out it goes to Julian, and Julian cuts back on the inside and gets the pass away, and Gigo will score! Tony Gigo will score! Catalan are over again! Oh! They are turning this semi-final into a walking day so far, and they don't know what to think. St Helens looking very second best. It is the Dragons who are breathing fire. What a last tackle play again. The orthodox to kick. This wasn't the orthodox. This is eyes up rugby league. And Gigo did the business. He's read where the space was. He passed the ball wide to the space. And through the went Julian it is. And what composure there just to offload to the inside the supporting Gigo. And over he goes by the post. That's a great, great decision by the French fullback. And that's a great, great result, which will be six points after this kick. He's been brilliant, hasn't he? He's been brilliant. He's taken the ball up, he's taken the ball to the line. The back, to, the back three, the centre and the winger drop back. He noticed that, he put the ball through the hands. Inside support. Easy try, brilliant play. I don't think anybody predicted this. Drinkwater puts it over, flags go up again, four out of five, 21 points to nil. 21 points for St. Helens to overhaul in the 42 and a half minutes that remain. Well, they're, they're not just beating them, they're absolutely walloping them, are they? They are. There, there hasn't been, a, apart from the Roby, effort they haven't really created anything they've had no field position totally dominant st helens have played all year like a rolls royce today they barely got off the drive we've just not seen the best of them and we've not been allowed to see the best of them because of how good catalan are they put, the, they put a clamp on the rolls royce they have uh, 
Steve, I'm telling you. Enough of that analogy. <laughs> There's Mead, the Papua New Guinean, captain, of course, at the last World Cup, David Mead. They've all done well. Mead has carded ball, Tierney's carded ball, Gigo's carded ball. The forward just giving him a little oh, bit of... Oh, going out of dummy half and finding support with Lange and Lange, teasing and tantalising and running past Barber as if he wasn't there. And look where they are again now, flooding forward. The pass is poor, but it's picked up off the bounce. They're over again. They are over again. Garcia with another. This is unbelievable. This is literally unbelievable. It is. And again, the first incision was straight down the middle. It went straight through the middle before the went to an edge. And over the go. I think Christophe Jouffre, the chief executive of the Catalan Dragons, he'd be looking for the cheap hotel wheels because, my word, they can start booking them, I think, now. That's a great bus, isn't it? Straight down the middle of the rook there. It's Lange there. And then there is an element of loss of composure, but the ball hits the ground. But what a good pickup from Garcia. And over he strolls for a bit of English sunshine. But again, the, you know, the break down the middle, defence was all over the place. A bouncing ball, he picks it up. They've had a bit of luck in this first half, but they've made it all themselves, haven't they? They've absolutely destroyed St Helens in this first half. They need, they need half-time St Helens. They've only lost twice all season, St Helens against Wakefield and Leeds. Only twice all season. You only need to lose twice and not win anything in this season, isn't it? That's it. Well, John Wilkin, John Wilkin was referencing a little earlier this week, the 2005 year, I think it was, when um, Saints finished the league ladder eight points clear and yet finished up with nothing in terms of the challenge cup or a grand final didn't even reach the finals are we going to see something similar here Drinkwater bangs it over again 27 points to nil well as a half of rugby league for this Catalan Dragons team it's been absolutely outstanding and they're fully deserving of that 27 points uh, up on the scoreboard yep and uh, it's going to be an interesting, interesting second half. I'm with you, John. You know, we've absolutely praised St. Helens for their performances this year. But Catalan Dragons have been fantastic this first half. Absolutely fantastic. The game plan of McNamara played to a tee. Well, at the start of the year, for the first five, six weeks, Catalan were a laughing stock. Nobody's laughing now, certainly not St. Helens fans. And you can see, you know, drink water, they're just pulling them in, they're not going off the field, they're going to get into a handle on the halfway line. Just watch. Let's go down, though, because uh, Benny Barber is with Tolson Toller. Good coat, this. Not a great half. How do you turn it around? With energy. Um, that's the only way we're going to come back. And that's why they're winning at the moment. They come out with full of energy. No confidence, uh, all the confidence in the world. And, put us in our place though and we just got our pants pulled down there and it's going to be one hell of a fight to come back but uh, look I still have faith in our side we've, we've showed it all year but we can come back against good sides and look I think it's going to come down energy and be in the back end of the game. Thanks Ben. All right. Josh Drinkwater, Josh. A first half full of physicality. Could you ever have been expecting your wildest dreams to 27 nil up? No, nah, mate, it's a good start. Um, I think it was St. Helens, eh? they can score us 27 points pretty quickly. So we've got another 40 minutes. You have to come out and do that again and be physical and uh, defend really well, complete our sets, and it should get us home. Josh, thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Well, the Dragon was happy in the uh, back of that shot, wasn't he? Uh, St. Helens nil, Catalan 27. And everything about those stats highlights Catalan's dominance. Uh, total meters gained is double. Uh, Saints have had to make double the amount of tackles. Uh, and Catalan leading pass. I suppose, Jamie Pick, actually, just looking at the tackles and the amount that Saints have had to put in into that first half physically, and yet Catalan have run riot. Yeah, what performance by Catalan Dragons. The, the perfect 40 minute to play semi final. Start the game with great defence. Brunard completely sets. And if I were to level any criticism at Saints this year, you would say their weakness would be in and around the middle. They're efficient, 
They're nice but not nasty, and I think Callum Dragons have taken advantage of that by going through the middle, running hard, being direct. Superb performance by the Dragons. Ben Barber said there to Tulson, energy. That's the difference. Yeah, swap energy for stop being bashed and bash them. Swap energy for run a little bit hard in around Rook. Try and find some Rook speed. That will help St. Helens, help their dummy half runners. Put this big set of blokes who have gone amazingly well in this first half under a little bit of the cost themselves. Saints have to speed the game up, take a few risks now because they're so far behind. But I have to say, that's perfect semi-final football from the Catalan Dragon. I think as well, we've seen maybe an hangover from the league, from St. Helens. They've had to be up for a game against Hull FC. They've played Wigan in the derby, beat them. They've played the local rivals, Warrington. There's only so many times you can dig deep and get a great performance out and find energy. And you've seen that there, the lack of energy in the first four minutes. Uh, we'll show you all the tries in just a moment. But let's first of all look at the Catalan defence, really, and, ha and how they stifled Saints and then that allowed themselves to cut free. Yeah, I, I thought they put great pressure on Saints and they did that right from the start of the game um, we see a great kick here and they're in unison we talked about a disciplined side well that's a disciplined Carlans line bending the back three back four players in there committed to the challenge of stopping the St. Helens back three, which is vitally important if, you, if you're going to beat yeah, St. They've, Helens. They've done that really well, Jamie, and you can see there their line speed that comes on the back of that. They're allowed to get forward because they dominated the rook, and they've replicated that with the ball as well, haven't they? They've played through St. Helens. Yeah, they've been prepared to get hurt. They've been prepared to be more physical, stop Saints before they even can get over the game line, and there's a the back three taken care of. They've only made two metres at the most, perhaps three metres. Well, there's another example of it here on the fringe. They're talking to each other, they're moving in unison. The winger knows clearly what the inside three men are going to do, and they close the play down there because there's red jumpers in the frame. They look like a well disciplined side, well coached. The Steve McNamara effect, I would say, on this. You would say before, Catalan's Dragon, ill disciplined side, not perhaps sticking to the systems in defence, but I, I think in both facets of the game. Defence and attack, they've been absolutely outstanding this first half. Is there also, uh, as we look at, you know, their intensity and their speed off the line, is there also, are they going to be feeding off this crowd? Because, because this is a very, despite all the Saints fans on the far side, as we alluded to pre-match, this is a very pro-Catalan stadium. The Leeds and the Warrington fans are very much behind Catalan. Yeah, I, if I were Saints, I imagine they feel a little bit like the Conservative Party when they go to the <laughs> Brexit deals, there's that many of them against them. Yeah, there's a great atmosphere for the Catalan Dragons, and the, the revelling in it, but the performance warrants it. That's why the crowd are on the feet. If they were losing by 10 points, this crowd wouldn't be behind them, but the thumping, the league leaders, 27-0. I know we're in the Sunday lunchtime slot, but I wasn't aware you were pitching for Andrew Neal's job, Jamie. Right, uh, let's, look, let's look at all the Catalan trials. Starts with Tierney's try. Yes, on the back of their physical prowess, what they do is they explode in the right parts of the field. They force an error here on with their great defence and they get them field position. Once they're in field position, they manage to strip numbers on the outside. They get an ele element of luck with the bounce ball. DJ finishes in the right place for Tierney. Yeah, it's a wonderful training ground move. I mean, if you'll level any criticism here, this is a play we see all the time in rugby league. The block play, a play going through. But when the centre comes in here, you've run it like Grace. He just misses the jump by a little bit. There's a large space. If he's up there with the centre, you would say he gets hold of this player just as he attacks the ball. But he's not there. A couple of metres off means a try in Super League. And unfortunately, that's a young winger learning his trade, learning that when his centre moves in and kills, he needs to kill the players one at the but same time. Are there not two that's a split second criticism of him, though. Yeah, it is, isn't yeah. it? And also, the handling was sensational. It's a beautiful catch, an absolute beautiful catch. Deserved the try. The, the level of skill deserved the try. But when they're going back to the training ground, looking at that on a Monday morning, you'd be saying, look, we go in and we go in together. A split uh, second behind is not good enough. No, when it was still 13-13, they then got another try, Garcia's try. First try. Yeah, it was it's a, on the back of the prowess again. What they're doing is playing through St. Helens. And they find an opportunity on their left-hand side. They isolate Danny Richardson. And what they do, Garcia's just got to hit the hole. Drinkwater is real cute and smart. Attracts Richardson with that stutter step. Garcia has to do the physical stuff. But it's on the back of them being at the right end of the field all the time. He would say in the half-back battle, that's 1-0 to Drinkwater yeah. because he stood Danny Richardson up marvellously. Look, the double pump of the ball... 
makes Danny Richard go into him and just leaves a slightly bigger hole. We talked about a split second before. That's perhaps 30 centimetres more than he wants to be. That but that's enough to score a try at this level. That execution at the highest level that Jamie talks about there is a difference between winning and losing. We've seen two examples there. Albeit the first one at the back of a bounce ball. But if you don't come in at the right time or stay out at the wrong time, as we've seen on those two examples, you're 12 points behind on the scoreboard. Now, ca casual sports fans or casual rugby league fans, uh, this happens quite a lot. You see an incident and a lot of us wins who haven't played the game, for example, and think, hmm, that could well be a red card. And then those of you, both of you have played the game and have been in the blood and thunder, and go, no, yellow's probably right. Yellow is right. <laughs> good decision. Definitely, good decision, yeah. Good I decision. Think, I think yellow is just sufficient punishment for this tackle. There's no intent there. It's lazy. He wants to make his tackle. It's just below the head. It looks I, dramatic, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks good. It looks like the WWE. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, Robert Hicks, well done. Right decision. Carlans get the benefit of playing against Saints for 12 men. Uh, sending off would have been too harsh a punishment for me. And yeah. I think he's got it right. Well done, He was Robert. fiddling at one point. There's a moment of drama. Everybody's going, oh, it's going to be red. No, no, he got the right decision with the yellow one. He's hit him across the top part of the chest and slid up. He got stood up by the player from Drinkwater again. And then Catalan took full advantage with Saints down to 12 men. Two tries in that last 10 minutes. And they have cut free to 27-0. Yeah, I think St. Helens looked shot in the, in the, in the last last 10 minutes of this game and that's down to the first 30 minutes and I think Catalans are an exciting team when they're on top we've seen that over the past 10 years of their introduction within to Super League and it's a great try again here well it's Gigo that's the master in chief yeah. Julian does real well Gigo's on the inside to finish the play but I think Lomax was out the line the winger was out the line so they took the numbers drink one he's done brilliantly well then seen that opportunity and that's with a man down you they are in shock Jamie's used a word there they needed half time really well whether half time's enough to create, claim back 25 points is will be remain to be seen but play through them keep playing through them that's what the Catalans did there they bust through the middle have plenty of numbers in support and then again it's scramble more for St Helens they line up on this left hand side who's Pick any one of three. Yeah, and I think it tries like this half 39 minutes in the making. You've got to hammer it through that middle time and time again. Be prepared to get physically hurt until you can break the defence in the last 10 minutes of a, of a, of a half. And Catalans have had the discipline to stick to that, and now they're reaping the rewards from it. You can't beat the old bounce pass in rugby league. Uh, and uh, they are 27 nil up, and it is a double header today here on the BBC. Both semi finals back to back. So, after the second half of Saints against Catalan, we're then going to show you Warrington against Leeds. Been a very odd season uh, for Leeds, and they have lost their head coach, Brian McDermott, as a result of their disappointing results. And as part of a restructuring, club legend Kevin Sinfield has taken over as director of rugby, and this week he sat down with Dave Wood. For the Leeds Rhinos, it's been 10 months that no one could have predicted. A grand final triumph was followed by a winter of transition. But in 2018, injuries have plagued the squad. And with the club facing a possible relegation battle, head coach Brian McDermott, winner of four grand finals, two Challenge Cups, was sacked. In their hour of need, the Rhinos turn to their most cherished son. This is my club, I've been here since we're 13. Look at this job for the next 30 years and... Shoulda, woulda, coulda, or I can, can have a go at it, so... Decided to have a crack and... Um, coaching's probably the wrong word. Um, you know, we've got a first team coach who's done a brilliant job for us in Jimmy Laws. Team selection final calls are with me. To do that properly, you need to understand the players and spend time with them and be out on the field with them. So I'm out there watching and observing and talking and probing and prodding and understanding exactly where we're at and what we're doing. So. Hmm. And your philosophy is what? Humility, honesty, working hard, and then wrapped around all those three, uh, enjoyment. This place hasn't been a happy place for a period of time and we've got to change that. Ultimately, a happy player is, is a dangerous player when you get it right. and. Sort of on the field, keep things pretty simple. Make as many things black and white as we can. Certainly build on our self-discipline. It's an area where it's come back in and bitten us on too many, too many occasions when we've been on the field in tight games and close games when the things you do off the field affect the things on when it really matters. It's quite difficult because when you get tired and when the bullets are flying, 
you fall back to your instincts, so we can change some bits in there. But what goes on in here and in your gut um, takes time. The beauty of this club in my time here as a player was about when we were faced with adversity. It brought the best out in us and we've got quite a lot of that going on at the minute and you know it's testing the character, it's testing the personalities, it's testing our humility, our integrity, our honesty, our hard work as a group and uh, we've got to find the answers. The DNA within the playing group that you've got knows the way around big games and the Warrington group might not have that experience. Is that something that you would buy into that you do have that big game DNA? There are still some players in this squad who have who, who remember what it's like to win big games, but the vast majority probably don't. I look forward to Sunday, I look forward to seeing what our response will be, how, how we react. We're pretty fortunate to be involved in a game of that size, pretty fortunate to be involved in the double header. It's live on the BBC, it's, it's a chance to showcase who we are and, and what we do, and I'm hoping it'll bring the best out. Jamie, he, he sounds a, a little bit, Kevin, like he's, he's caught in the middle of a couple of roles at the moment. Whilst he is overseeing everything, with team selection and everything still his responsibility, he's sort of caught between director and head coach. Yeah, I think he's a little bit too involved on the rugby side at the moment, but sometimes in that role in sport needs, needs most, and I think he's the right appointment for the job, and he needs to be given time to work his way into that role and have his impact of what Kevin Simber can do. He's very strategic and very understanding of the game as Kevin. But at the moment, yeah, I'd like to see him probably step back a bit, but he can't at the moment until I believe they go through the process of getting the right head coach. You tackle the problems at hand, and the problems at hand is they're not playing too well at the moment. So you throw all your resources at that. He'll get plenty of chance to move the checkerboards around and see who he wants where and when. He's got to be playing well. And a quick one on this, because both teams are back out here. Can Catalan, with a 27-0 lead, conserve energy in this second half? No, they need to go out again the first 10 minutes. This next 10 minutes is crucially important. I think if Saints can score in this first 10 minutes, they've got a chance of winning. If Catalans can hold them out, the Catalans are going to win the game. Warrington leads still to come. It's a semi-final doubleheader here on BBC One. What a second 40 minutes this could be, though. Saints have it all to do. Let's rejoin John Keir, Jonathan Davis and Dave Woods. Well, five unanswered tries is what St Helens need in his second half to get them to Wembley for the first time in 10 years. Remember 2008, last time they were there. The year before that, they beat Catalan at the brand new Wembley, the very first game of rugby league at the brand new Wembley. Catalan not exactly humiliated that day, but they were very much second best, losing 30 points to eight. Well, nothing second best about what they produced so far here today, and they are starting this second half. Catalan, in the manner in which they hope to proceed. And take it on the front foot, they are capable of doing it. With the, you know, the attacking players behind, they, can, they are capable of doing it. But it all starts with these big boys here. They have to set the platform and really pile into the Catalan Dragons forwards. Well, I'm really looking forward to this uh, second 40 minutes, Dave, because there's going to be a story, isn't there? The story of St. Helens getting walloped or one of the greatest comebacks ever in this competition. And St. Helens struggling to get to the halfway line here on the fifth. Percival will play the ball, Roby, high to Richardson, he's got to readjust what exactly he meant to do, and his kick, therefore, okay. is straight into the chest of Tony Gigo. Yeah. and Gigo's back to the 25 before he's met by that rabble. He adjusted well then, a poor pass, got a left foot kick in. Tierney. Two, move, Matty. But you can, you can see the difference in the defensive line speed, can't you? They're hungry, Cartland Dragons. Edwards to his feet. Drink water back to the middle. Hammered down by Battieri. Couple of plays to go. Off it again. Well, they're on the fifth. And the last. Gigo's kick. Barber has it covered. Catches on the full. He's done a look see if he was in the in goal area. The referee says, no, you weren't. So. They play from there. Tolson Tollett's got news of what was said in those changing rooms at halftime. Yeah, Dave, a pretty easy team talk, I think, for the Catalans coach, Steve McNamara. It's a case of keep the speed up, stick with what we're doing in the first half, and 
just don't give Saints a path back into the match. I think that's the overwhelming message from Steve Three. McNamara. This Saints Helens team are very good. Don't give them an opportunity. And then for the St Helens side, Justin Holbrook, pretty simple there as well. Get back to what we know. Uh, get too busy worrying about what the opposition are going to bring at you. And they have to strike next, which is the obvious point. Thanks, Dawson. Well, he's had his heartbreaks at the hands of St. Helens as uh, Steve McNamara in this competition a couple of times as a player in 97. Wembley Stadium, the old Wembley, and um, as a coach of the Bradford Bulls in uh, 2007 in, uh, in a semi final, I think that was. So twice as a Bradford player and coach, St. Helens have been him. Is he getting retribution today? He's got, or well, his side have got a penalty here. Remember, St. still down to 12 for the time being. It'll be another three or four minutes before they have. And there's another couple of minutes before they are back to the 13. Everything seems to be going Dragon's way. Every decision. They've got to make the most of it. Just don't get involved. Yeah. Even if you feel things that you can't play the victim, even if you feel things are going against you, you've just got to look at the next play, the next set of six, and get on with the game like that. There's a scamper out of Dunny Hart by Benjamin Garcia. This is Battieri. Oh, it's um, a pass that's juggled but held on to a step back. But Benjamin Julian. What a spell at Warrington, didn't he? Not that long ago. In fact, last year he was uh, still at that club. Here's Garcia going right, Lange. There are smaller halfbacks in the game. This is Garcia again in that dummy half roll. A step back towards the left and an offload by Busquet has kept it alive and Anderson will take them on down the middle right in front of the sticks it's the last play and it's another penalty right in front of the sticks right in front two points here if they want to kick it it's an easy one they'll be kicking this Dave just keep the scoreboard ticking over, keep the pressure building on St. Helens. Hey, they win the rook and they're going And you'll quick. get more and more of those 50-50s. I'm not saying you, that's what the penalty's Morgan for. Knowles you need to calm down. Down below is about to come back on out of the sin bin. 13-0 when he went off. Yeah, mate. Could be 29-0 when he comes two. back on again. Back on. Will be. Yep, and the referee's quite right. It was a penalty. And you think, look, two... Interference penalties. Well, it's, it's simply because they're carrying so Just hard yeah, and, and the, the they've been able to get to the front and play the right ball now. quickly. So, That's consequently, it, Saints yeah. aren't being good enough in that area. And you take shortcuts, yeah. you take shortcuts, you give penalties away. Yeah. As Brian said, after up the middle, up the middle, up the middle, they've taken them on up the middle and they've smashed them. And it's up to those forwards now to try and match it because if they go too wide too early, you know, they've it's not going to work, so they've got to go, have to go forward first. Knowles is now back on, and Drinkwater kicks it, and that is 29-0. But Catalan lead here. Still five tries and five goals. Just the five tries and five goals, Joel. But without Catalan scoring again, that's the big one as well. And I think what this Dragons team and Steve McNamara have done, they've given all the sub-league coaches a template for when you play St. Helens. I was thinking oh, that. That's an interesting kick there. Just hung it high and hung it long. And Mead has to come in, he's had the ball stolen. He's had the ball stolen. Referee's not sure about that. He's going to ask the, the, the touch judge whether the tackle was complete before the ball came out. What do you think? Have a look at yes. this. He was on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, he was on the ground. Yeah. The officials have got it right. Penalty for Catalan. I, I think Robert Hicks and his the team of officials have done really well today. I really do. Yeah. It's an intense atmosphere and they've been very calm and composed in the decision making. Mead with a tap. Immediately taking on the responsibility. Gigo at dummy half. Julien. Benjamin Julien. He's like a missile. Don't quite see the full effect on that occasion. That's, that's how he kind of plays the game. Here's Busquet. He's been, he's been immense. Busquet has been immense. It's Lesignon. Gigo offering it back on the inside to Bertieri. Again, the, the middle channel. It's not, not changing, are they? No. They are not changing this formula. Just be relentless. Anderson, Casti, Arami Casti. Stand 
Now it's uh, Drinkwater with a kick towards that in-goal area, and all that Barbeck can do is just carry it out of play and concede the dropout underneath the sticks. I think if nothing else tells you how dominant Catalan have been today, the fact that we've hardly mentioned Ben Barber, a potential superstar of this game, the fact that he's hardly been mentioned, shows you how little hey, options Saints have been given. Even Percival, low marks, no, they haven't been mentioned, have they? They haven't had the opportunity. No, who has been mentioned have been all this Catalan he's Dragons he's forward he's back. back. Running out of yep. Barber's lost his boot and just using the uh, excuse of tying the laces up again to slow things down a little here. They all do it. Richardson with a drop. Whoa. Anderson. <laughs> hold, hold, go. And here they come again, taken in by Busque. Ah! Release, Luke! Go to. Here's Garcia. Thierry to his feet. He's a little look at the referee, thought he might be milking a penalty out of that situation. Busquet keeps it alive, keeps it alive. Here comes Drinkwater, a little dummy show. Four, move, Danny. Five metres away, still tackles in the bag. The money's on Catalan scoring next at this moment. Anderson with a pass away. Busquet held up. So here they are, final play. Lange quickly there, a little bit of a slip. Gigo holds them off, tries to get a kick in, then puts a, a loose pass. Tierney back to Mead. Mead with a, a kick that hits a St Helens man. St Helens have it back here. Oh, and then the ball goes free, and Mead picks it up and scores a try. But there's so many questions. Like an Agatha Christie novel, this one. There might be a twist or two before we get to the conclusion. The referee says on the field. What is he saying on the field? Well, he's saying a thing or two to uh, James Roby at the moment. And Roby said that's gamesmanship. If someone's injured, no try on the field. No try on the field. Please check for the contact. Let's uh, let's then throw it to the video referee for the first time today. Here's Phil Bentham. I've got no try, and he's checking it. Let's go through from the kick because we have to check on side first. Sorry. Okay, first kick, pause it on the foot, please. Okay, I'm happy they're onside. They're onside there, that's fine. I think there's a second kick though now. Or is it just a fumble? Might just be a fumble. Looks like Percival's knocked on. But we've also got to see the contact on Percival. So, Percival knocks on into the Catalan player. Just go back and let's have a look at the contact on Percival, please. Knock on, but there's contact on the head of Percival. We don't need to go any further than that. The foul play overrides the knock on, therefore it will be a penalty to St Helens for a high tackle. Contact with the head, Rob. Well, this is going to go down one in one corner of the stadium, isn't it? St. Helens fans have got something, something to hang on to. Penalty for St. Helens. It was interesting to see what uh, James Roby said there. It was a uh, gamesmanship. He was injured, he dropped the ball. Shouldn't have tried, shouldn't have been a low. But I think there was a, an, an escape clause there the, with a high shot. Right decision. I think I think if, if they had scored, that, that would have been that. Oh, all over. Absolutely. That was that, as it is. I think that contact there uh, tells you. Yes, that's that real to tell you the truth. Three defenders smashed John Wilkin then. Thompson. Roby out of dummy half. Lomax on this left hand side. Carries the line. Wilkin can't get the pass away because Mead is right in his face. And they're all having a nibble here. McCarthy Scarsbrook to Farge. Here's Barber. Now it's Swift. It's too lateral. 
it's too lateral. Well, they're not going forward, are they? No, they're just, they're just mapping no off. Half. Half. There's no one half. Dragons. Darby gets in there. Up goes the kick. And, uh, well, good shot. Great in both respects there. Yeah. Terrific catch by Tierney and wonderfully well timed by Percival. And Tierney feels like his ribcage has just crunched inside him, but it was perfectly legal. And this is what they need. The now the Saints fans are off their no, seats. Knock on. Knock on. Two knock on. First knock on. Spin down. Saints head and feed. Listen to the reaction from the Saints fans. It's as if they've just scored a try. Well, it's almost as important as that. That's a great contact there, just feeling the ball, and they whacked him as he received it. Look at the line speed here. Line speed, aggression, contact, that forced the error. Yeah. That's an important, important uh, point for St. Helens in this game. I wonder whether we'll be looking back at the David Mead no try in that particular moment as a big turning point in the game, or whether it's just a footnote in an otherwise easy win for Kepler. We shall see. We shall see. A lot depends on what happens in this next set of six, which will time it, take a time to take, because um, Tierney's getting some uh, treatment here. It's, you can forgive him needing a bit of treatment. Great take, great tackle. Well, it's a physical game, isn't it? As the Catalan forwards have demonstrated consistently, and that's a physical challenge from Mark Percival Brilliant. on Lewis Turney. Brilliant time tackle. Tell you what, then. Time's off. You're not losing anything. You caused that yourself. Tony! Tony! Get that heading. Ball. Out. Here we go. Stiff Here up. we go. Lomax. Little spin away from Makinson. Ball. But they swarm around him again. Oh, they are swarming, Dave. They're hunting them, aren't they? Really are. Thompson, he can uh, put a bit of honesty into that situation. Straightforward, brute honesty. Richardson to Lomax to Barber. Quick hands, and now it's Percival. And Percival will finally open St. Helens' account. It has taken them nigh on 50 minutes to get over that whitewash. But now they're there, and now they have a bit of hope in this semi-final. They do. That's an important passage, isn't it, from the disallowed try to that error that Saints forced to the to the try that scored. And it was a well-taken try. Yeah. And they just managed to get the ball away before that onrushing Catalan defence came. But Gigo is absolutely ruining Kenny Edwards for going the wrong side of the rook. It left them short on the right, and that's the consequence. And also Tierney came in. He came in, he was in no man's land, and they got the ball beyond it, it was an easy run, he should have stayed his line a little bit. It's like when uh, JV said at half-time, if one goes in, you all go in, and you've got to try and stop it at source. Unfortunately then, Tierney went in, nobody else went in, there was numbers on the outside. Just what St Helens wanted. So Danny Richardson, this young kid, kid has kicked some unbelievable goals in unbelievable circumstances this year, but he won't be putting that in his scrapbook, that's got why. And they need all they can get, they need all they can get. They can't afford to be missing goals in this situation. No. But 4.29 give us Saints a glimmer when previously there was only darkness. Yes, and that's the, the home that they've got. But my word, it's a heck of a long way back, still 25 points. Hell of a way. And I'll tell you, Gigo, it was it was really giving Kenny Edwards it there because he felt that he'd been dishonest at the rook. He pointed him to the right, he went to the left, and that left them down on numbers. Here's a ball of energy, Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook. He always looks ready for the rumble, doesn't he? Farge, Theo Farge, the Frenchman against the Frenchmen. Roby, dummy half, penalty, penalty St. Helens. Tides changing. Yeah, momentum. You have momentum in the game. You got to make up those points when you have it. Richardson bangs it out of play. St Helens restart will be 10 meters inside the Catalan half. Here it comes, and here he comes. Thompson, oh, stop me if you can. And how many meters did he make after the first impact there? Another good five or six. Richardson left to Farge. Here comes Wilkin couple of plays gone and they're creeping closer McCarthy Scarsbrook the engines running now Roby Farsh 
Oh, and he's missed the cue to Thompson. And it's Catalan who have it. Small in the sense we know. Poor pass by Fars there. No, he didn't need to push that pass. It was a poor pass. Free play, free play. So the uh, tackle count starts here from Catalan. They'll just be looking for an honest set here, won't they? Straightforward five with a kick. Like they've done all game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, maybe they'll put a bit of flash on. But the pass goes through the hands of Yaha. Richardson has it. This is a, a, a free play. That's why he is uh, trying to make things happen. And when they don't quite, he knows that they can revert back to the original decision, which is head and feed for St. Helens. They've got to get in the scrum as well. They've got to stop the clock. Well, he should take those, shouldn't he, the wingman? He's got to take them. What an opportunity that is. Yeah, if you stood out there on the sidelines sunning yourself when you call into play, <laughs> you need to do Time your job. Off. That could have been the end. Look at you being dismissive about wingers, John Kerr. Muscular touch judges, dear. Yeah, you, you were one of those. The, the sunning, sunning yourself on the, on the sidelines. Muscular touch judges. Even the reps, refs are muscular now, I'm not sure why. The, 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 the whist is not that heavy to carry around, is it? It's the burden of responsibility, Jimmy. Oh, sh yeah, OK. I think it's ego myself. So St. Well, Helens it. with a set that starts inside the Catalan half. Well, look at the job they've done there on Makinson. Defensive, so often he makes inroads. Defensively, William and Mead have been very good as well. And Percival, who's made more tackle busts than anyone else in the Super League this year. 140. Bob is the next best at 115. Still the second at tackle. That's the third. Nose put down. Thompson taken off at the kneecaps by Battiero. Farge. Richardson ducks underneath Julian. Lost his head and lost his footing. I think he got a real cop around the head there. And the ref, I think, is going to go back to a penalty for St. Helens. Yeah, fair shot. He's put advantage. He's a high shot. Penalty. Well, if the score this set, tap and go. Score this set, Jonathan. Yep. Oh, we know Saints are well capable yep. of scoring five tries. Well capable. That's a terrific drive in the first instance. Morgan Mills making up for lost time. Roby's down at dummy half and puts it back, and Thompson will try to run over the top of them with a Catalana holding on. Here comes. The Tempest, the Storm, and here comes McCarthy, Scarsbrook! Here we go! He scores again! St. Helens have two now, back-to-back, -back in five minutes. There's the belief the Wembley trip might be back on. They're feeling the sunshine, finally! Yes, yeah, great play, wasn't it? The centre point up for the attacking shape, and it was very well executed. Richardson hit the lead runner, McCarthy Scarbrook really came onto the ball. And over he goes there, through the Catalan defence. He's gone low as Julian. And over the top, McCarthy Scarbrook goes. Yeah. You can feel the rumble around the ground, can't you? You can feel the rumble of expectation now. Saints any, fans, full voice. And at any other side, 29 nil down, you're thinking, oh, it's over, it's over. But just because it's in Helens, they've done it so many times before. It's just that still that buzz of excitement, anticipation. And he knows it as well. It may well not see Matt Namada, but I'll tell you what, Jonathan, it's going to be 29-10 up at this stage. I'm with you, John. I'm down. with you, John, I'm with you. Well, he might just be having nightmares. Remember, I think it was a playoff game a few years ago when he was the Bradford coach against Brian Noble's Wigan, and I think they were leading that game by a similar margin, and Wigan came rocking and rolling right back to win that match. Are St. Helens going to do something here in a Challenge Cup semi-final? Thompson. There's the final, 25th of August, don't miss it. Whoever's in, it's going to be a cracker. It's two from four. Saints or Catalan and Leeds against Warrington coming up next. It's been a wonderful day here at Bolton. The occasion has been terrific. A couple of hours before kickoff, everyone outside. Wonderful atmosphere. Lomax. Barber.
swoops away from one, offers us to another. Here comes Benny Barber. Barber trying to get a toe end on that, missed it. The ball gets dropped, and even though Regan Grace kicks it on, the referee says it was a knock on. We saw a glimpse of the match. Yeah. We did, but that's a great tackle again from Benjamin Julian, I'll tell you. Yeah. The cover tackle. I think he was beaten a couple of times, yeah, Julian, but, he, but got back again. He did, he looked Time around the back, didn't he? Off. And that's great work, work ethic Time that he showed off. there to defuse the situation. But there's uh, winning signs for the Dragons, good signs for the Saints. He's a wonderful runner, isn't he? Come on, Benny Barber, wonderful to come watch on, this He's year. This now. Didn't quite come off then. Come on, let's get in. There is injuries, we're not spraying out. Come on. Let's get in. 19 points the difference. It is still four ben, times St. Helens have to score. Close, in, please, ben. Ben. That drop goal. Well, back in the 32nd minute from Zico. Could yet, could yet prove so crucial. Tierney, who started it all off with a try. Back in the 20th. Edwards. As expected, just a little bit flat to note. Effort forward by Moa. Well, he knows one way only, doesn't he, Sam yeah. Moa? He's Lange. So Nillen singing their song. Casti. And a kick on the last out of dummy half by oh. Zico. No need for Grace. To, uh, to take a gamble on that because he knows his side get head and feet. But Dave, don't you think he should have made a play for that? I mean, the, the clock's not their friend, is it? No, it's not. You know, it, they need the ball, they need it in play, they need to be playing quick. I think it was fizzing past him as well, John. I can think, look, okay, maybe he assessed it very quickly. He, yeah, he did give up on it rather quickly as well. That, that hits his boot and rolls out of the touch. Momentum's completely changed again. That's well, like, it's well, all it, about it is a great at the minute. Just look at it. The game's all about making the right decisions. Okay, John, we've got another Heading match to go yet. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down, John. Lomax with a feed. Out. Here's Regan Grace. Roby. Richardson. Little dummy. He can't skip. Still need their forwards. Here he is, Thompson. Good effort. Three, well, Julian, he's ploughed a lonely fitter, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. He has. He, he needs some backup, doesn't he, young Thompson? McCarthy Scarsbrook's had an influence and a great offload as well. And here's Lomax ducking and getting away to Fars and Fars taking those quick steps forward. And um, all in all, that's a good little play. From tackle three to tackle four, they've covered some distance. Wilkin, oh, there was hit. nobody near him. Couldn't great get a pass hit. away. Knock on. Brilliant, brilliant hit. Knock again. on. Busquet. He has stood up today. It's been fantastic, he hasn't has. it? Really good. I mean, that's a real physical, aggressive challenge, isn't it? Worthy final. of a Challenge Cup semi final. French is singing this. Or? That is a momentum killer, isn't it? That hit. Not many French supporters here today, about 200 or so. Expensive trip from the south of France this time of year, especially apparently, but uh, they've enjoyed making that trip. It'll be expensive in August the 25th, won't it, Dave? Yep. You need another one in this Come on, can stay out, somebody else comes in. I was talking to um, French journalist yesterday who was saying that if the final was played in Paris, if Catalan were in it, they'd fill any stadium. But getting to London is so difficult for them that it, it might be difficult to sell tickets amongst the, uh, the Catalan faith. I think you had to be there, dear, for that conversation. Makahora. It's more. Plenty, plenty of time Hold left in the day. This is Remy Casti. Again, look at that. Look at that carry. He's, he's carrying him like rucksacks. Further downfield. McLaurin out of dummy half. This case pass and Drinkwater with a ball back on the inside for Zico. The Emma 
dangerous. Tony Gigo, who's still keeping it alive. Look at this from Gigo. He will not be tackled. And eventually he is. McAlora out of dummy half goes right to Lange. Lange shows a little dummy. Five away, one tackle to go. Drink water. Chips, nurdles it, Richardson's under it, it's spilled, picked up by Barber, play on. Good job, well, Benny well, Boy was yeah. there. Well cleared up, dangerous kick again. Yeah, good place to turn over though, isn't it? Yeah. Swift. And look at the line speed as well again. 60 minutes into the game. Lomax. Hunting from Marker. Back three having trouble getting away. McCarthy Scarsbrook's coming off. He looks exhausted, tyres coming on. Saints, meantime, carry on. Thompson, head jerks back at the ferocity of the hit. Oh, look at that. Look where they are. Last tackle, look where they are. Richardson could do with a 40-20. He thinks he might be able to zip through. He can't. So back it comes to Wilkin. Lomax. This is... Um... Oh, it's a forward pass. pass. Forward pass. Well, they lost their way. They might have gone for a 40-20. Richardson fancied that he might have seen a route through, and Saints in the end give it up with a forward pass. Yeah. It, it certainly brought some energy to the Saints, hasn't it, Theo Farge? And that's the last tackle decision by Richardson to run the ball. Possible knock on there from John Wilkin, but certain forward pass here from Theo Farge. So Catalan look to have steadied things down, don't they, here? Saints had that momentum, but... Uh, Catalan back with an element of control. Muller. Edwards. Kenny Edwards. Six tries in his eight appearances before today. There's another who's made a big Here impact. They Here they come again. Effort from Simon, Mikhail Simon. Look how close they are. Drink water, Lange. More. More is over. Sam Moore over the line. And that might just be a match winner for the French. They're on their way to Wembley for the second time in their history, barring a miraculous escape from St. Helens now. Well, if there's ever been a philosophy of play through rather than round, the Catalan Dragons have executed perfectly. Again, it was route one, again, it was direct, and it got big man Sam Mower on small man Theo Farge. And my word, did he go over the top of him. Yeah. All came back to this forward pass. By Farge. Which was their last tackle play, they ran the ball. But then, just look at this, big man on small man. Over you go. That's all they've done, isn't it? They've targeted uh, Richardson, they've targeted, you know, Lomax, they've targeted Farge, and the half-backs have been brilliant. Lange, this time, holding the defence, isolating the defender, and that's a tough ass to stop that guy that close to the line and that is it that is Catalan he'll be happy Dili is he happy so here comes drink water drink water left footed strokes it over 35 points to 10 Robbie on the ball well, body language is so important for St. Helens right now. There's still there over 15 minutes to go in this game. By no means, this St. Helens team can score four or five tries in that time. They need to do it. Body language and energy is everything. Well, the dynamics of the stadium have changed since the beginning of the game when uh, the, the end to our right-hand side, what we're looking at there, what you can see there is the, the St. Helens fans, and you can see very little animation, but to our right it was mostly empty, but they are filling those seats quickly now, Sellout Stadium today, of course. They're filling those seats with the Leeds and Warrington supporters, and it was their roar. They were the ones who were roaring that lifted the noise on that Sam Moa try. There's the... Um, 
The next game, 2.45 as it stands, and a forum red button online from 5 o'clock, hashtag BBCRL, or the usual social media routes to take part in the conversation. And what about the final? Catalan are on their way to London on the 25th of August. And I'll tell you what, Dave, they may well be cheering the Catalans now, but whoever plays against them on that day at Wembley, exactly. they've got a job on. Yeah, St Helens fans might want to buy a ticket or two to go and get retribution if their side do not get back here. Well, that's a kick which um, just dribbles, agonizing away from Swift. Saints get the head and feed. 16 to go. This is their season here, isn't it, Catalan? They, they've made the eight, they're not gonna, they're not gonna really, realistically not gonna push for a grand final place in those top eights. I tell you what, Dave, if, they play, if they play like this, it'd be tough to beat. They'll cause some carnage. Oh, carnage, like they, they are capable, we know, individually they've been, you know, they've looked very dangerous on paper, collectively That's then, it. they've actually, you know, played as a team with direction from the half-back, threatening, there's always been, the big forwards, and today they have absolutely smashed St Helens forwards. Two th oh, that's a knock on on the very first. That sums up the mood for St Helens at the moment. Yeah. Justin Albrook must be absolutely devastated with what's befallen his side today. It's not very often you can enjoy a semi final with 15 minutes to go. But I think you, the Catalan players can now. Well, I'm certain that Steve McNamara can. England coach led England to a series win, of course, against New Zealand under his tenure. It's, it's, he again, he told me before the game, if he's in the studio for the second game, I hope there's some light refreshments there for him, he said. <laughs> Here's Garcia. Well, he's, he's done his job very, very well, hasn't he? And uh, his team have done their job outstandingly well. Drinkwater with a pass to his left. Same formula. Kesti held up five away. McAlora made a dummy half. And uh, Simon did well to hang on to that. Lauren back it comes, Yiko taking him on, quick hands, me pops it over the top, Tierney. Well dragged out of play, good defence. Yeah. I think he'd be disappointed he didn't finish there, Tierney, but... Um, well, let's give Saints a bit of credit there, though. That's, that defense. was urgent defence, it was. They worked really hard to get across to Tierney, and they did a good job. I think that just that little fumble just gave them the chance, the time, the opportunity to get over there. This is one of the great semi-final performances, you know, this. Ah, yeah, it really sure. is. Put it to a team who's lost so few games over the season and they've really put them to the sword. Well, they've been in... Th this is their third semi-final now, Catalan. They got, they got rather battered and bruised against Warrington in 2010, 50 odd points to 12. But the 2007 one they won, which, again, Citing Brian Noble, it was Brian Noble's Wigan that day. Little Stacey Jones was the magician that day. Well, that was a uh, terrific yeah, semi-final. He, he was a world-class player, Stacey Jones. But this is a really assured, complete... It's a great team performance, this. Yeah, it is. All the 17 guys who've been out there for the Dragons can uh, feel that they've contributed fully. To be honest, and there's no answer to it, did they? Out muscled and he didn't have an answer to it. Here's Swift. Looking to Lomax, and here's a bit of room now for Zeptar to strike through. Trying to push away no the defenders that chase. No support here. Here's Barber. Richardson. Rogi. Still it goes along the line. Cut back towards the middle, and Mickinson, who steps out of a couple of tackles, does well. We've seen him do that kind of thing destructively all year. Not often enough today, though, not being given the chance. Lomax to Barber. 
Barbonneau onto the line, double pump from him and Percival will project his way through and score at the corner, I think. No, we've got to have confirmation. What's he saying? I think he's going to try. Yeah, try on the field. Check the ground in place. But we're going to have line. to go for confirmation. Let's hear again from Phil Bentham, the video referee. So we'll check in if he stays in the field of play and if he grounds the ball correctly. Balls, oh. Looks like it slips out the ball, actually, there. Does he retain possession of the ball during that process? Is the ball still on that? Still on the arm? That's what we need to see. If the ball remains in contact with his arm, it would be a try. Even if the hand comes off, if the arm stays in contact, it would be a try. There, it looks as if there's still a wrist on the ball. His foot is in the field of play. So I can confirm the on-field decision of a try. You go straight there, I'll get in line. So he's given it. Just wait he's for the given touch, it. Right? But it's 35 right, 14. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there's still a huge, huge gap. And that clock just keeps ticking down. This would be incredible if St. Helens rescue it from here, but... Oh, he's kicked that. That's a wonderful kick. Wonderful kick from Richardson. So 16-35. So again, the context of that is, uh, what, 19 points now, so Saints have to score four more times. Yeah, it was a well-constructed try, wasn't it? And uh, Barber, once again, it's interested the Britain defences, but Percival really came onto that ball, showed great strength to finish. Yeah, great finish there, Percival. Come on the outside once again. Four, four tries in 12 minutes, fellas. What are you thinking? What are the odds? Don't know. They'll be big. Yeah, I can't see coming off someone. Score in this set. We get a little excited. Thompson. Wilkin. Lomax. Here's Benny Barber. Oh! That doesn't help. Yeah, players who have been so dependable all season. Morgan knows it earlier, and Mark Percival's done it there. Yeah, and it's just not as they've played it's, all season. It's pressure, isn't it? Pressure. Yeah. Just watch again. The press defence are coming in. Yeah, enough time there. It's probably the worst St. Helens have played all year, and yeah. Yeah. On, the, on the biggest of stages. But they've not, they've not been allowed to play. No, it's Catalan have been absolutely outstanding. Well, the consolation for St. Helens is they go back to the, uh, the Super 8s that begin next week, knowing that only a couple of wins cements them in, uh, in top spot. They're already guaranteed a semi-final place, I think. Uh, whatever happens, so they, they, they've got a crack at Old Trafford and a grand final, but um, they were desperate to get back to Wembley. They've not been there for 10 years. They were desperate to get back. It's not going to be their year. McAloran. Drink water. Saints uh, hanging on again here. Simon straightening up. McAloran. Lange puts it back and uh, Moa and gets the ball away and Giga keeps it alive and uh, it's a penalty offside. Again, they open them up. Yeah, it's through the middle. They're really clever out of. They've had lots of variation, but the the general philosophy is we're going straight through you. Yeah. Just what? Gigo again just hangs around inside ball, runs there. Blind shoulder of the defender. And don't forget, this is just the uh, the first of two. Leeds against Warrington. The next one. 
both sides have arrived at the uh, half time in this game. We saw coaches and various players from the two sides milling around oh. on the touchline. Zero, zero, zero. Here's Amor. Just some early team news, by the way, for um, people switching on for that Warrington Leeds game. There was some doubt about Jamie Jones Buchanan playing for Leeds. Well, he does play. He starts in the loose forwards position. And Ryan Hall, who had a little bit of doubt about him, he's also playing. Likewise, Richie Myler. So it's looking a pretty strong Leeds side. And we'll bring you all those teams and uh, all the build up as soon as we finish this game here. Let's take a deflection. St. Helens have another set of six. Zero. Making some plays. Thompson continues. Eight and a half minutes to go. St. Helens, Wembley dream, the sun is setting on that. Barber. Wouldn't he have been a wonderful individual to have watched at Wembley, Ben Barber? Not today. Now Percival dropped, knocked off. Heads down from St. Helens, right. hands on hips from St. Helens. High fives and thorough enthusiasm from Kettler. Yeah, well, it was Mickey McAloran, wasn't it? And uh, I think the former Wigan player will take great delight at this. Great challenge there, forced the error. And he knows that he's, uh, he's going to progress to Wembley at the expense of uh, Wigan rivals, St. Helens. Thirty-sixth semi-final this for St. Helens today. The Challenge Cup. It's going to be loss number fifteen. Get in, Mike. Head, please. Head, Kyle. Ben, stay there. Mike, head. Ball, Tommy. Here's Langy with a feed. One, two, three, four, Lauren going left. Here's Kenny Edwards. Trying to plow a furrow 40 metres out from his own line. A, a pick up and a dash by Braden Willie Army. Two to go. I'll tell you, we, we don't feel the full effect of this from where we are, but you, you cannot measure how big this will be for French rugby league. Well, that's great game management, isn't it? Tony Gigo with a lovely kick into the corner there, not only buying territory, but running that clock down as well. Is that a good game, him? And the city of Perpignan Rugby League is very much a big deal. Catalan, their team, of course, but there are other French sides dotted around, the likes of Toulouse, who are looking to get into the Super League next year, who will feel a boost from this. French Rugby League will get so much pride from this side going to the Challenge Cup final. Rightly so, it's been a tremendous performance. You know, the form side in the Championship of St Helens, littered with superstars, but, you know, they've been totally outplayed today. He needs to bind, don't have a go at me, he needs to bind. He just don't want to do it. Heads. Not that that is of any consolation to those who are following St Helens today. Will be thoroughly thor and deservedly thoroughly miserable because the season they've had has been terrific, but just not able to do it today. Lomax is tackled, Roby's in at dummy half. Here comes Regan Grace. Can he add a bit of magic here? No, nope. he runs into the unwelcoming arms of Sam Moa. Wilkin to Amor. Lomax. Little show and go. go. Barber. Jigo will catch it in the field of play, and he field stayed just about in the field of play. So, Catalan start a set there. That was untidy, but Tierney was able to scamper back and pick it up. Go. 
Three. Move now. Hold there, Louis. Hold. Hold. Our Challenge Cup coverage this year on the BBC went right back to the first round when we Hold. streamed Move, some of those um, those early rounds, including Catalan against York. And on that day, Catalan were actually a little bit lucky to win against um, the third-tier side, York, who are doing terrific this year, by the way, York. Um, and they looked awful. They looked absolutely awful, but their, their improvement in form has been so dramatic. Here's Grace, looking to run it back. And they're still doing the principles at the base. The game plan on really well, even now. Kicking well, chasing well, defending tough. Surrender! Stand now, Mamie, come on. Hold, hold on. Still trying. Three, two, hold. But trying is the buzzword, I think, for Saints today. It's been very trying. Amor. Oh. Move now, back here. Keep coming. Roby, spinning it back to Wilkin. Barber, passing away. Mikinson with a chip and a chase, and Catalan have it covered, as you would expect today. So, Jonathan Davis, you've got the uh, the duty of picking the man of the, the joy of picking the man of the match today. Who are you, who are you going with? Yeah, I think we've you know discussed it here, and uh, the forwards, the Catalan Dragons forwards have been absolutely immense. They've laid the platform for Lange and Drinkwater, but I think still the standard standard play for me has been Tony Gigo at fullback. He is my Ladbrook Challenge Cup. Man of the match, but you know, it was, a, it was a team effort, even this guy was immense. But he was, uh, he has been the one standout player over and above the great team effort. Here's Kenny Edwards making a cut and thrust of it down that left hand side. The, the little flicked pass to keep it going, Lange, and now Garcia. Two times try scoring in the first half, Drinkwater tries the chip, Wilkin picks it up. Is he going to go 70 yards? I don't think so. Is he going to go 60 more? No. They put the effort in here, Saints. And it is showing. McElroy on, again. It's fantastic. Everything done, isn't it? It's fantastic, isn't it? You just love his whole approach to playing the game. McCarthy scars broke, and he tried to get it away to Lomax. But it's dropped to the ground, and he drops to the ground in utter frustration and fatigue. Steve McNamara, what a year he has had at the Catalan Dragons, the start of the season. It was absolutely diabolical, but he said it would come good, he said it would come good. So many, so many of his players involved in the World Cup for France and for Papua New Guinea and other nations as well, Ireland, other nations as well. More than any other club, I think, Catalan had players involved in that World Cup, so he knew it would take time for them to gel, and boy, is it gelling now. Hunt for the chief executive, they're on their way to Wembley. Nobody would have predicted the manner in which they've won this game but the manner in which they have won this game suggests they have to be taken very, very seriously when we get to that Challenge Cup final in three weeks' time. Agony for Justin Holbrook. In learn from it, though, Justin Holbrook is a real clever guy and a very, very smart coach. And obviously it'll hurt greatly. But he will learn from it, and the youngsters within his team will learn from it as well. Yeah, they have the quality to bounce back, and they have to they look at this game and learn from it. But the, you know, Catalan Dragons, they've been, they have been, you know, good individually, but they've lacked, you know, consistency. That's what's been their problem. What's going on here? A bit of cramp. It's a hot day. Robert Hicks has got no uh, no sympathy. He says, well, if he's injured, get the ball off him. Okay, Kenny, and and as soon as he hears that, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Edwards jumps to his feet. There's a bit too much of that. He's, gonna, no, he's gone again, though. He's gone again, I think. Hang on. I agree with you, though, Dave. I, 
There is too much at the minute. Stop starting the game, and all of a sudden, when they're told to play end of it, it's a miraculous yeah. recovery. Yeah, not, not part of rugby league, that is it. Without, without being all high and mighty about these things, but it's not. And here's Garcia. Two brilliant drives. A couple of plays to go here, and McAlorum's just going to kick for the corner. Great kick, really intelligent, really intelligent kick. Uh, and luckily for him, it, it rolls too far, and Barber's cool enough to let it go dead. But um, the intent there was uh, was quite brainy, wasn't it? Lomax, Taya, Grace. I think we've got a bit of Remy Casti on the uh, player mic as well, haven't we? So that's something to look forward to. Oh, that's a knock. Oh, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable knock on from St. Helens. That was a free player. So the referee says, we'll go back to the knock on. It's getting a little scrappy towards the end here, inevitably because of the balance yeah. of the game. A minute to go. Catalan back in May, but he has had an impact. Here's Moa. Mickey McIlorum's on his way back to Wembley again with Catalan this time. Three, move, come on, all the way. McIlorum delivers. Gigo's just going to go for a drop goal. It's a tired attempt. It's a tired attempt. It's a tap back on the 20, but there's only. 26 seconds left to play here. No rush from St. Helens. What's the point? So the last set, it's a kick and a chase. Referee says play on. Mead picks it up. Can he entertain us here with a, a finish? In fact, it's Yaha. Yaha with a kick to the Ingol area. Barber collects it. Barber just pushing away. Giga at Yaha, and down he goes with a tackle. Well, the blood and golds are on their way to Wembley. They've shed blood today at times, they have produced a golden performance. Catalan have been outstanding in this disposal of St. Helens. Nobody, nobody would have predicted just how good Catalan would be today. How much better they would be than St. Helens. Steve McNamara, hats off to you and your side. What a sensational victory for them. Yeah, very, very impressive performance. You now, we all knew what they would come, would come with. You know, even John Wilkins said the sad start of the week. But they just couldn't compete with them. They steamrolled them in the first half. The forwards were immense, laid the platform, and they scored some tries. Very, very impressive and thoroughly deserved win for the Catalan Dragons. Yeah, the game plan was perfect and it was executed perfectly as well by the guys out there on the field. A first-class performance and a well-deserved victory and we look forward to seeing them at Wembley. Well, one quarter of this stadium begins to empty, disappointed St Helens supporters, but the rest of the ground is on its feet. Leeds fans, Warrington fans and Catalan supporters too celebrating that fine win anticipating another fine game leads warrington to come but let's reflect on this sensational catalan performance right now great team effort but one individual standing out tony gigo and he is downstairs at the moment and he's speaking with tolson tollett he certainly is dave tony gigo man of the match first of all again adrian osman the head of sponsorship at labrooks to give you that uh, nice bottle of bubbly there congratulations Firstly, what does that mean to be going to Wembley for you? Wow, well, it's a beautiful feeling. One year ago, I was 
was bad. I look, my mate played the middle eight, going to the one million pound game, and wow, he's, I'm very proud to be part of this team. We've been awesome today, and uh, wow, I'm very happy and for all our fans, for the club. It's so beautiful. We touched on it there. It's been a difficult start to the season for you personally, but as a team, you've come on so well in the second half of the season. What do you put it down to? I think you can see all the boys never stop to work. And you have the picture today when you never stop to work and you work hard. They always pay. And this group never stop work. We work so hard. And now we meet you all in Wembley. Thank you very much. And just lastly, as a back, you obviously take a lot of the plaudits, but your forwards today were outstanding in that first half especially. Yes, yeah, so I all work very hard and I want to I wanna be in, like all my boys today, work hard, help my team and that's all we did. So thank you very much. Tony, congratulations, all the best at Wembley. Thank you. Well, Josh Drinkwater is here as well. Josh, in that first half, maybe a little bit slower in the second half, but that first half, it must have been something you've never seen before. Yeah, mate, I think we've probably done enough in the first half to win. Um, you know, we're out there, we've got a couple of lucky goals and lucky bounces, but you make your own luck. I've been mean, working really hard over the past probably 12 weeks, so, um, you know, it's just a reward for our hard effort. But when you look at this, going to Wembley now, three weeks between there now, how do you make sure that you peak again for Wembley? Yeah, I think it's a, we just have a little break now. We go back, we focus on the Super 8s, uh, keep winning. We just want to keep winning our games and uh, go into Wembley full of confidence. Josh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Steve McNamara, you've been to Wembley as a player. You're there now as a coach. How do you bring yourself to look at this situation in three weeks' time and go again? Yeah, it's pretty incredible for the club. Obviously, we, last year was in the, the million pound game, and, and you know this year we're at Wembley, so fantastic turnaround. The players have worked extremely hard. We've got three weeks now to get ready for that game, and you know we'll use all those three weeks to make sure you know again we can hopefully put in a performance something like we did tonight. I spoke to a couple of backs there. You were a forward yourself. Your forwards today were outstanding in their first half. The physicality, especially. Yeah. Well, we couldn't let Saints play. If we'd have come here and sat back and let them come out, we would have been in all sorts of trouble. So we've been defending OK over the last few weeks, but that was probably the best, uh, most physical we forced Saints into plenty of areas in that first half and second half. Steve, what, what, what would it mean for the Catalan Dragons to win a trophy? What would it mean to French Rugby League? Well, look, we're the only club that's probably not won a Chance Cup or a Grand Final. and We can be part of the group that's the first to do that. Perpignan is, is an unbelievable place, they're so passionate. Um, you can see by the fans that we've brought across here tonight, uh, today, so it'll mean a lot, and particularly for the French rugby league. I, I am really pleased for the all of French rugby league because it needs a boost, and hopefully, uh, us getting to the final will do so. Say so thanks for your time and all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Well, Justin Holbrook, not as happy a situation for you. What do you put that down to? Oh, yeah, full credit to Catalans. They come and just pull us off the park, didn't they? And we had no answers. So, uh, all, yeah, oh, too many errors. That's, that's simple. We, we made too many errors and they took full advantage of it. They spoke about it during the game in the commentary, but Ben Barber has never been as quiet, but that's down to the Catalan style of play. Oh, definitely, yeah, full, full credit to them. Yeah, Benny's still not 100% fit, but there's no excuse on, on, on our performance. As I said, I, I don't take anything away from them. They, uh, they did to us what we've been doing a lot of teams, and... And we had no answers for, for the whole first half and then chasing our tail in the second half, doing uncharacteristic things, but you've got to try stuff, don't you? Well, the Super League now title is still there. You're still at the top of that. You're going to the Super 8s now. How do you lift yourself? Yeah, well, we'll have a rest after that, won't we? And, um, well, we've got no choice, do we? Unfortunately, the uh, Challenge Cup's over and uh, it's not for us. Um, disappointing. I'm really disappointed. Justin, thanks for uh, facing the cameras anyway. Thanks. Cheers, Mr. Olsen. And as we look at the dejected Saints players, Brian, sometimes you just have to hold your hands up, don't you? Like Justin Holbrook did. You could do all your, the analysis you want and you look for all sorts of reasons, but sometimes you just go, do you know what? We were battered by a better team, and that happened to them today. I'm not sure he'll exp express himself like that with a team because they'll be feeling a little bit fragile now, but you're absolutely right. They were outplayed physically. And what I admired so much about the Catalan game is they didn't drift away from it in the second half. They kept person away, persevering away at the middle, finding their fronts, taking the opportunities when they came, played the game out on many occasions. You'd see Saints come back. There was never any chance of that. I think that was compliment to the Catalan.
you tip Catalan to win this semi-final beforehand. And you also highlighted the form that Catalan had been in, Jamie, won nine of their last 11. But despite both of those things, were you still surprised at just how dominant Catalan were? It was an incredible performance. I think if you go into a semi-final, that's the performance you want. That's the performance you dream of as a player, as a coach. I think they, they beat Senna in every area. Execution, intensity, ferocity, how hard they run, how hard they tackle. Well done, Catalan Dragons. They deserve every bit of their success. They deserve to be in the final. And I know I say this a lot when, when we do rugby league, but the respect from the other fans to Catalan at the end, the Warrington end, and I know Warrington came out to warm up around the same time, but that Warrington end ahead of the second semi-final were all on their feet giving Catalan a standing ovation. The Leeds fans down below us here, a standing ovation. The Saints team, to be fair, got a standing ovation from their own fans yeah. on the far side. Well, the, they saw two teams that gave their all, and while Saints were off their game today, there was no lack of effort, and that's a concern for a club and a supporter if you see that. What we saw here is the techno fear factor of St Helens away for Leeds and Warrington should either of those teams make the final. And so they might not be thinking that way in two, in two weeks' time when they have to play the Catalan because they set a marker down there. And as we described their form at the start of this game, they're in good shape. Yeah, and I just think, I think the fans have shown respect for an absolutely outstanding performance. And I think the teams in Super League have been prodding and probing around how to beat this runaway Central and side. Well, we've emphatically seen it by the Catalan Dragons today. And I think off the back of that performance, whoever they go up against, whether it be Leeds, whether it be Warrington, you'd think they can win it. Whereas before the last time they got to the Challenge Cup final, I think they were happy to be there. And you see that the players are already talking about, we want to win at Wembley. Yeah, I think absolutely right. I think the final will be exciting because of the way the Catalans are playing. And we got a precursor as to how you might get close to Saints last week with this Warrington team that are coming out here with the way that they play and they offload it and they took it up the middle. It's a strange challenge, this second game, sneaking into this one now. Uh, Steve McNamara is going to have quite a lot of duties to do, but we hope that he will join us uh, a little bit later on. Go on, Jamie, what are you going to say? I'm just that? wondering which language is that in. Is that in English or, or French? Well, <laughs> full on hull. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Broad hull, yeah. Exactly. It's interesting you should say that, actually, because on the field, we are told that Remy Casti speaks both French and English to try and guide this Catalan team around. And during that 80 minutes, he wore the player mic for us. Obviously, that's not great if you're a, uh, a St. Helens fan, but uh, for Catalan fans, that will make them smile. It turns out that it doesn't matter whether you speak English or French, a grunt is the same <laughs> in either language. There they are celebrating. Our second semi-final is on the way. Warrington against Leeds. That will kick off just after 5-3. to three. And then next Saturday evening, you know who is back. As a player, Alan Shearer was all about strength and power. And he's just the same at work. I really can make my own way to reception. Never. Gary was a centre forward who could find space anywhere. And then there's Ian. His game was all about the element of surprise. Claire! <laughs> OK. With a new season. <laughs> yeah, we love having them in the office. Match of the day is back. Next Saturday at 10.20 on BBC One and BBC iPlayer.
So match of the day back next Saturday night. Uh, we're going to stay on the red button after the second semi-final. So if you want to be part of the Rugby League Forum, hashtag BBCRL. If you want more of the European Championships, then that's on BBC2 right